Ready to start? Okay, um, thank you, members. Um, we're just going to get started. This is the monthly meeting of Council for March 2023. I'm going to pass to the Chief Executive for attendance and apologies. Thank you, Mayor, and good afternoon, members. To all members of Derry City and Strabane District Council, you're hereby summoned to attend the monthly meeting of the Council, which will be a hybrid meeting conducted remotely via WebEx and physically here in the Council Chamber. Wednesday, 29th of March at 2 o'clock. Alderman Bresland. Here, John. Alderman Devaney. Here, John. Alderman Guy. Here, John. Alderman Hussey. Aye. Alderman Kerrigan. Alderman McCready. Here, online. Alderman McMorris. Here, John, online. Alderman Thompson. Alderman Wark. Councillor Jason Barr. Here, John. Councillor Raymond Barr. Councillor John Boyle. Uh, online, uh, Chief Executive. Councillor Michaela Boyle. Sure, John, online. Councillor Carr. Councillor Cusick. Online, John, thank you. Councillor Dobbins. Here, John, online. Councillor Donnelly. Sure. Councillor Doyle. Councillor Do Alex Duffy. Councillor Sandra Duffy. Sure. Councillor Edwards, Councillor Farrell, online. Councillor Ferguson, here, John. Councillor Gallagher, sure. Councillor Harkin, Councillor Heaney, sure. Councillor Jackson, sure. Councillor Kelly, he's going on online too. Councillor Logue, and sure, John, online. Councillor McGinley, Councillor McGowan, sure. Councillor McGuire. Councillor McHugh. Sure. Councillor McKinney. Here, John. Councillor Mooney. Here. Councillor Norris. Councillor O'Neill. Councillor Riley. Councillor Sinoy Barr. And Councillor Tierney. Thank you, members. Thank you, Chief Executive. Um, just to read the broadcasting statement, I would like to remind everyone present that this meeting will be broadcast live to the internet. I think there should be hybrid on there as well. Um, and will be capable of repeated viewing. The webcast may be terminated or suspended in accordance with our protocol. If you are seated in the lower public seating media areas, it is possible that the recording captures will capture your image and will, will result in the possibility that your image will become part of the broadcast. This may infringe your human data protection rights and if you wish to avoid this you should move to the upper public gallery um, also in terms of people online etiquette in terms of keeping your mics and cameras off when you're not speaking and using the chat box to um, indicate that you wish to speak um, I would also ask that um, if anyone needs to see our privacy notice it's on the website so thank you for that I had to improvise <laughs> Declarations of members' interests. If you want to indicate in the chat box that you have, um, you need to declare an interest. Um, moving on to chairperson's business, there's um, quite a number of issues today to be discussed. So I would ask people to be as brief as they possibly can, because we do have quite a, a number of other issues to a, a large number of business to get through in terms of the body of meeting. I have spoken to people who have indicated that they wish to raise issues, and I have asked that there is no proposals today in chairperson's business um, just to try and get through the business that is at hand. Um, so just in terms of myself to start with, I want to welcome everyone to the meeting. I want to thank everyone um, for the work that they have done on, during this council term. It has probably been one of the most challenging council terms um, in terms of we faced a global pandemic. We have faced many crises in terms of the cost of living emergency. Um, we had to really look at how we do business as a council, and I think we have stood up to the challenge and we have been innovative in how we have done that. And I thank the council officers as well for the, the work that they have done in terms of um, 
being creative around how we do business. Um, so, but thanks to yourselves, and I wish you all the very best in terms of the election campaigns that are going to be fought over the next wee while. Um, I would just like to pay particular um, mention to a number of members who um, are not going forward for election, and they are Councillor Angela Dobbins, Councillor Michaela Boyle, Councillor Dan Kelly, Councillor Keir Maguire, and Alderman Drew Thompson. And just want to note um, on record my thanks to them as councillors, and probably particular mention to um, Councillor Dobbins as the, the Deputy Mayor and the work that she has done. Um, she has stepped up many times to um, represent myself um, when I have had other events on, and she has done so with um, great dignity and um, has represented the Council very well. So I want to put on record particularly my thanks to Councillor Dobbins. I'm going to allow you to come in on that, um, Councillor Cheney. Thank you, Mayor. And I suppose, first of all, um, on behalf of our group, just to, to join with you and thank officers and um, fellow councillors across the chamber for um, all of the, the hard work that has gone on uh, throughout this mandate, um, being thrown under a, a global pandemic. Um, I think this council reacted very, very quickly. Um, and one of the, the quickest, of my memory serves me right, across the north, making sure um, that services were allowed to continue and that um, council business was still allowed to um, progress, albeit from an online platform. Um, I also, um, on behalf of the SDLP, um, pass on our thanks to all of those um, councillors who have decided uh, not to stand at this election. But it won't surprise anyone um, that, particularly um, like yourself, I want to acknowledge the, the work of my DEA colleague um, and friend, Councillor Angela Dobbins, um, from across everyone uh, within our group, who are um, absolutely devastated at the hard, very difficult decision that Angela had to take, um, where she felt that due to failing health, um, that she would not be able to offer the service that her constituents um, needed and deserved. And I think, on, on behalf of our group, I think it was a very, very brave decision. Angela will be missed. There's no doubt about it within this council chamber. She will certainly be missed within our council group, but thankfully will remain a very key um, activist within our party and someone who many of us will, will lean on, um, hopefully in the coming years, uh, for, for strong advice. And with Angela, as everyone will know, um, you'll get very, very straight talking uh, answers back. Um, but to everyone um, who has decided not to stand, um, I, I thank them and I wish them well for the future. Um, and I have to say on a personal level, uh, I'm absolutely devastated that Angela won't be joining us um, again uh, after, after the election within this chamber. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Tierney, and that's all noted. Um, in terms of other items for chairperson's business, I, I just want to mention St Patrick's Day um, and the Spring Carnival here um, throughout the city and throughout the district, which was tremendous and that we had um, amazing numbers in attendance. So I want to thank everybody who took part in that and council officers who were involved in the organisation of it. Um, over that weekend as well, I held a 24-hour busk um, for the Mayor's charity. And I want to pay particular thanks to um, Councillor John Boyle, who was our John Boyd, John McGowan, um, who, who was um, leading in terms of the organisation of it, and particular thanks to the Nerve Centre, who um, provided amazing talent from across the city and district. We really have um, amazing musicians and artists, um, and it, it, they should have the opportunity to be showcased. So I was glad to have the opportunity to do that. Um, then, uh, just today, I have seen that Jason Smith, the Paralympian, has announced his retirement. Um, so I want to put on record um, my thanks to him for everything that he has achieved uh, through the city and district. He has been an um, amazing athlete, 21 gold medals, an unblemished, undefeated record. Um, I think that that is remarkable and it definitely deserves a mention um, today. Um, and just finally, for myself, um, James McLean. Um, an amazing footballer, soccer player from this um, city, is on 98 caps for Ireland. Um, probably um, in June, will reach 100. And I think there's only, if he reaches the 100, he will be the seventh person to reach 100 caps for Ireland. Um, so perhaps the next mayor will um, fittingly um, address that. But I just want to put on record my congratulations to both athletes from the city. 
Um, moving on then to um, other items for chairperson's business that have been sent through to myself and just to remind people again, I'm not taking proposals today. Um, so I'm going to start off with Councillor Boyd. Thank you, Mayor, and I want to echo uh, all you've said uh, in wishing colleagues who may be returning and who will not be returning the very best. And to say on behalf personally and on behalf of me too, thanks to all the officers as well for their uh, support and advice over the last uh, number of years. Um, Mayor, you'll know uh, that on Wednesday the 15th of March in our DEA, uh, there was a terrible incident of animal cruelty. Um, a dog had been uh, brutalised and buried, uh, partially in Ballyarna Country Park. Um, people across the city and district and wider field have been rightly horrified and very angry uh, about what has happened. And people now are calling out for stronger laws and harsher sentences for those who uh, perpetrate such crimes against uh, defenceless animals. Um, our welfare laws with regards to breeding in particular are entirely lax and don't reflect the, the need for uh, increased regulation when it comes to people who are uh, home breeders uh, who, who don't necessarily fit the regulations that are in place at the moment. Um, I've called for a summit uh, over the summer to try and uh, address some of the old laws that we now have in place with regards to animal welfare. And I just wanted to raise that uh, there is uh, a rally that has been organised uh, for the 19th of April at 9am um, in Guildhall Square um, by uh, people who have been very uh, horrified by, by what's happened. Um, this has to signal a change in how we all address animal welfare throughout this city and district. That includes the need for people to report to us uh, and to the police if needs be um, when they suspect that there is an animal that is being mistreated because at the level um, of cruelty that we've seen with regards to this specific case, um, the conversation has been had with me multiple times that you know if, if someone can do that to an animal, what is it uh, that they're capable of? Uh, with regards to other humans. Um, so just wanted to put that on the record and to make members aware um, because it's we have to send a message from this chamber that that type of behaviour is absolutely unacceptable um, and people in this city and district won't stand for it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Doyle. And just for accuracy, I think the rally is the 13th of April, not the 19th. Um, Councillor Ferguson. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you, the Councillor Doyle, for raising it. I think this is a, a huge issue, and I think we have seen over recent years a number of ongoing animal life, welfare issues, especially when we had Bramble and now Perlina. Um, I think it highlights the need for the change in our legislation, but also the need um, and the fact that we're the fact that I had raised that we actually need an animal welfare officer dedicated to our area. Now, thankfully, we have one full time, but they're not based in our council directly. They're based in another council. I think um, there is progression that needs to be done with the outcome of what happened to Luna and Mary, I, I say this because she was an American Bulldog and I have a nine year old one at home and it was absolutely horrifying to see the state of her and the way that she was treated badly because I know how loving those dogs can be and how much of a family dog they are and people are breeding them to make them look scary, basically. Mm -hmm. And the fact that we have no registered breeders here in the whole Derry and Straban, none, because the law is too lax. I met with Dogs Trust and Dogs Trust have said that you have to breed your dog more than twice to be registered as a breeder, and we have none. And we have multiple, multiple yeah. advertisements on Gumtree and Dundee with puppies being sold for hundreds and hundreds of pounds. I think it's something we as a council need to strengthen our animal welfare here in council, but also we need to be pushing for that legislation change within the assembly. And we need to have not only the banned breeders list, but someone who's actually going to check to make sure that these people don't have dogs. Um, so we're happy that you've raised it. I will be at the, the rally for Luna on the 13th of April, and hopefully people will come out and show how much that uh, this is not something we appreciate and not something that we will take in our city and district. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Councillor Tierney. Thank you, Mayor, and thanks to Councillor Doyle. 
um, for, for, for bringing this up. I had a, thankfully had the opportunity to speak about this um, at a committee meeting during the month um, whenever it was just becoming clear um, what had actually happened. Um, and I say at the end, you know, Ballyarna Country Park, for anyone who knows it, um, is a very beautiful open space which is used um, by tons and tons of families, not just from Ballyarna, but from across this district and further afield, because I know um, a lot that come from, from, from Donegal um, as well to use it. What happened there was absolutely horrific. And I think the objection to that was amplified by people from right across this district and, again, further afield, who um, could not believe um, what happened to that dog and, and, and the way that it was, it was treated um, and then left. I can't imagine what those that, that, that found Luna um, actually um, are going through at the moment. I can't imagine that that was a very easy sight um, to see um, and something um, that I believe will, will, will haunt them for, for many years to come. Commissioner Ferguson rightly talked about um, a change of legislation, an animal welfare officer, whatever it is we need to do, then we need to do it to make sure that something like this doesn't happen again um, and to make sure that animals don't fall into uh, the hands of people that um, are unfortunately are not responsible um, owners for them um, and not someone who's going to give them the, the care and the attention uh, that they need. What happened has put a stain on our community um, in Ballyarnett as someone who, who lives there, um, not too far from, from, from the park, and someone who's represented there for the last nine odd years, that's not the message that we want to see going out about our community. We, and Mayor, you will know this, fought with the nail to ensure that there was a play park um, in, in Ballyarna Country Park. There's work going on to ensure that there's appropriate facilities within Ballyarna Country Park, and there's a lot going, going on um, within that particular area. We don't want this. Our community in Ballyarna and across this district doesn't need it. And I'm thankful um, that those who have were responsible for what happened to Luna um, were caught pretty quickly. The dogs that they did have were taken under care um, and that hopefully um, we will see justice um, for, for, for Luna prevail in the, in, the, in the coming weeks and months. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Tenney. Councillor Neil. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, yeah, people before profit um, will be supporting the, the rally uh, for Luna and, and against animal cruelty. And, you know, I was definitely heartbroken to read the story of Luna, um, but it was welcome to see the public outcry and the public support for, you know, uh, animal welfare and, uh, and the improved treatment of animals across the board. Um, you know, I, I have a rescue dog myself, and, you know, they're unfortunately this. This case for Luna wasn't an isolated case, and it's also a, a worst case scenario of a much bigger issue when, when it comes to animal cruelty or animal neglect. Um, and you know, there's there's a lot that needs to be done, which has been mentioned. Um, and people before profit support the need for improved reg regulation and, and improved resources for this, um, <clears throat> because it's really important that. You know something has done about this because uh, cruelty to animals and how we treat animals uh, is reflective of how we treat each other, and uh, it's really, really important that uh, this outcry is as public that it is uh, it's loud uh, and and that something proper is done about it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Nate. Councillor Donnelly. Good morning, Chair. Uh, look, I think it's important the the express. Similar sentiments, I think it needs to be from right across the board regarding what uh, there seems to be. Well, it's been highlighted over the last number of weeks in, in animals. Uh, it's been well documented about Luna, but I'm not sure if anybody who had seen the news last night about Garfield, the cat, it is impossible they have watched that segment on the news and not be disturbed about what was there. Initially, I couldn't watch it, and then I came to the conclusion that I was glad it was there because it needs to be exposed. This is a, this was a one-year-old cat that was submerged in a barrel of oil. Not only once, but when it when when its owners cleaned it up, and it suffered uh, very serious industrial burns. The perpetrators decided that it would be whatever. I don't know why they done it, and I'm not even going to begin to try and get under their heads to do it again. And not only do it again, but swing it by the tail. And cause it internal injuries, and anybody who watched that will not can't not be affected 
listening to, to, to the owners, uh, the cat was eventually put down due to uh, internal injuries. So I think it is important that, that people speak out and whatever can be done should be done to, to stop these types of incidents. On a more positive note, uh, I'd like to pay tribute to the councillors who and other other men who aren't running again. I wish them luck. And on the sporting front, I was lucky enough to be at an event in the Everglades for local kickboxing talent on Saturday night. And I would just like to pay tribute there to three local fighters, uh, Colin McBerty uh, from Rathmore Warriors, who won the Irish Welterweight Championship, Jake Mooney also from uh, Rathmore Warriors, uh, who won the light uh, with title, and 12-year-old Annie Murphy from Tad Ring, who very impressively defeated, defeated a French competitor and they won a world title belt. So maybe if it's possible that you could send those people or the, the rings or the, the organisations a, a, a letter, uh, you know, congratulating them. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Johnny. And on that note, I, I am attempting to reach out to Annie Murphy, but I'm glad that you have um, highlighted the other two. So thank you for that. Um, Alderman Hussey. Uh, thank you, Mayor. And initially, just to um, echo your words with regard to those stepping down and best wishes to all going forward. On the specifics of animal welfare, I fully agree with uh, Councillor Ferguson in regard to the placement of a designated animal welfare officer in our council area. And as members in the chamber know, have spoken on that before when we discovered that there was uh, no animal welfare officer based in the council area. Uh, we understand the group system of staff across a, a wider area, but that does not uh, negate the need or specific provision in our council area. If we're contributing to the pot, we deserve the service, and that service should be based within the council area. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Um, Councillor Cusack. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you for allowing me to come in there. I know that Councillor Tierney has spoken on behalf of the party, but um, I've been contacted by numerous people over Luna, so I just want to confirm my personal support for their campaign and the protection of animals and their welfare. Um, as you know, I've had uh, numerous motions and spoken for those who have no voice in this chamber numerous times in my 10 years, and having enjoyed my own pup for over 15 years, I want to reiterate my disdain and disgust and worry for the type of people who find torture and innocent beings for amusement. Uh, it's absolutely distressing and disgusting and shame on them. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Cusack. Um, Councillor McGowan. Thank you. Uh, I just want to echo everything that has been said. I think like most people, when this story broke, we all uh, we just thought it was incredulous that something like this would happen. Uh, and in our own DEAs, as Councillor Tierney has, has pointed out, it doesn't reflect the majority of, of dog and animal owners throughout the district. Uh, but again, one or two of these incidents is one or two too many. So like everyone else, I, I think we need to be very vigilant about animal welfare. And I, I agree that you know improved regulation is very, very important. So Sinn Féin will also be attending the rally. Uh, and there's no excuse and no room in this city for anyone that, that feels that they can abuse any animal. So I just wanted to say that and I agree with what everyone has said. And on the point regarding animal welfare, we should look at this as a council and see if there's something that we're missing. Because you know any society that allows animals to be tortured is is, is not a good society. So we should learn from this and, and, and make it a lesson for ourselves if there's something we can do. And the next mandate, uh, they ensure it never happens again. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor McGowan. Um, Alderman Devaney. Thank you, Mayor, for uh, allowing me in. And I just want to be associated out from our part of DEP um, with the rest of the comments made and round here about the shocking sight that we saw of the, the poor dog, Luna. Uh, and look, I, I, I do agree with everyone else. It's an issue that, that uh, Everyone on the, uh, at this meeting will condemn and others, but we must not get mixed up uh, with those many people out there who are very much 
good dog owners who look after their dogs very 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 well treated but look um I, I know there was one person maybe two people arrested in this case and a few dogs have been um removed from properties uh, um in relation to this so um i do welcome that but chair this was a shocking sight for anyone to see uh, and to read that that, that the, the dog had been repeatedly beaten with rocks and had further rocks placed on top of it when it was buried was very very sad and disgusting thanks mayor for allowing me in. thank you alderman devaney and thank you um alderman mark <laughs> Thank you, thank you, Mayor, for the me. I think everything to be said by elected members. I would encourage all elected members to be here on the 13th of April at the Guilds Hall. I think it's nine o'clock, so it is. They yeah. show support on this here. And it's obviously, as Councillor Ferguson raised there about the animal welfare officers, something we need to be looking at as a council. And I, I think definitely in the justice system here, there needs to be tougher, tougher sentence pulling people regarding. Um, I'm a little cruelty, and especially what happened to Luna in the city. It's it's disappointing to hear to hear that she's coming from this city like this here, and it's it's definitely a shame the people who carried that out. But um, I'm sure every elected member will be there on the 13th of April at 9 a.m. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Alderman Mark, and no further speakers indicated. So thank you to Councillor Doyle for bringing it up, and absolutely, it was. Horrific and heartbreaking. Um, I have spoken to family members of the person who came across it, and it is just absolutely horrific to hear what Luna went through. It's it's devastating, and that that person, I don't know how they they are going to get over it because it was a terrible, terrible sight. Um, but um, I'm glad that it was discussed today and um, it's a really emotive issue so I'm glad that it was done in a respectful way as well. Um, there is a lot that can happen over the next while um, but we do need to be addressing the animal cruelty. There, I think there's a lot to be done around education, um, particularly people who maybe don't see the stories behind Facebook posts um, selling dogs and don't see the cruelty or the circumstances behind it. So I think there's a bit of education that needs to happen around that. But I thank Councillor Doyle for bringing this up. Um, and I have spoken to um, some of the organisers of it and spoken to Philip as a city solicitor. I can't attend um, as mayor, um, but I will be there as a private citizen. So thank you for that. Um, moving on, the next item of chairperson's business, it was between Dan Kelly and Philip McKinney, but I think, Councillor McKinney, you're going to take it. Uh, Madam Mayor, I've just had a text from Dan. He's still not available to speak, though I would prefer if he could have spoke. Uh, may I carry on? Can I, can I carry on? Yes, go ahead. OK, right. Um, OK, uh, we've requested... Uh, it's been, we sent an email sent to the Mayor asking that... Uh, the Guild Hall be lit up in the colour of green uh, for remembering Srebrenica on the 6th of July. Although the genocide took place on the 11th of July, we thought it more appropriate to do it on the 6th of July because there's also a tree planting ceremony taking place in St Collins Park uh, on the 6th of July for it as well. And I would hope that members of the new council would attend that. And that's it. Thank you very much, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor McKinney. Um, next item for Chairperson's Business is Councillor Harkin. Thank you, Mayor. And um, I want to thank uh, the Mayor for uh, her chair sharing of these meetings uh, over the past year. I think she's done a very good job. She's been very, very fair. And uh, we commend you for that and wish you well in your post-mayor period, whatever that looks like. Um, and all the best to uh, councillors and aldermen who've decided not to stand again. Um, we've uh, probably had a good share of arguments in here, uh, but we also acknowledge the, the, you know, the work that you do representing people across the district. Um, so I, I, I thank the mayor for giving me the opportunity to raise um, the funding threat to bridge accessible transportation and shop mobility. Uh, people may have heard about this. There hasn't been as much focus on 
bridge, as there has been in some of the rural transportation threats, but bridge itself, um, they carry out and, and perform over 500 trips a week. Uh, you know, they help people with disabilities, they help a lot of older people, um, they help people get to work, they help people get to appointments, they help people get to from nursing homes to community centres uh, so that there's engagement. Um, so what, what they would like to see is that the council and political parties and, and councillors and independents all fully acknowledge the social value of what they do. Um, because sometimes I think there's an idea that they just pick, pick some people up in the morning, drop them off, and it's a much uh, what they do. They provide a much much wider uh, crucial service to people right across the city. Um, and if it if it if it goes missing, a lot of people will be stuck in their house, will not be able to go to their clubs, will not be able to go to doctors' appointments, um, will not be able to socially interact and engage. Um, the, the, one of the things that's very frustrating with Bridge right now is that the, their funding comes entirely from the DFA. Uh, they raise some money by themselves, but this is a DFA-funded organisation. And the DFA are not actually even engaging with them right now. They're not responding to requests for meetings. Um, and they're kind of dodging them. And this is creating uncertainty for, obviously, for the workers there, but also the people who depend on the service. Um, and that's, uh, that's just not acceptable. So I think that, obviously, there's no motions today, but I think we as individual councillors and parties and aldermen can obviously um, press the DFA to uh, properly engage with Bridge and give them some uh, surety about the future, um, about, about their future budget. Um, and you know the other thing about Bridge that's important to mention is that they haven't had a funding increase for nearly a decade. So they've been providing more services, like many organisations in the community sector, um, with less and less resources. Um, and that's just, uh, you know, it, it's a tribute to them, but it's also uh, not sustainable in the long run. So we have to, we have to have a, a change of thinking in terms of how uh, Stormont is operating. Um, obviously, uh, you know, the, the, it's very frustrating that the Secretary of State um, isn't setting a budget and giving uh, some clarity on that. It's very frustrating that uh, the, the, the department chiefs at Stormont are unwilling to do that. And obviously, um, at the centre of this as well is the, the DUP's continued cynical, selfish, reckless boycott of Stormont that is causing so much uncertainty uh, for workers and communities uh, here in Derry, but right across the north. So, uh, again, you know, there's an appeal there uh, uh, to uh, move things forward so that, so that uh, people can get on with delivering services and not worrying about whether or not they're going to have a job or whether or not they're going to be able to make it to a doctor's appointment. Thank you. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Harkin um, and other speakers. Um, I'm going to bring in now Councillor Emma, Emma McKinley. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, Mayor. Uh, for that, man. Um, just before I go into this year's reason, just to thank you as your time as mayor uh, on behalf of Sinn Féin, we think you've done a great job. We're very proud of you. Um, you've been fair in the chamber and also just to wish the best to everybody that isn't running again. Um, it's been great for the time I've been here anyway. He's all, all worked well. Um, the issue that I'm looking to raise, I'm actually looking to take this opportunity to pass condolences of the council to the family, friends and colleagues of John Allen, who passed away last week. Um, for anybody that doesn't know John, uh, he worked for Council. He started working at the old Derry City Council in 2002. Um, from speaking to his daughter, he was just supposed to come in and work for six weeks to roll out the first phase of the Blue Buns. And 20 years later, he was still an integral part of the Council team. Um, he worked at the Brandywell Recycling Centre and then he was on the Bun Larry's then as well, right up until he took sick. Um, John was a quiet man, just got on with his business, but anybody that knew him, um, he was full of crack and enjoyed the all pint and mealies and absolutely loved for his family. John's also my best friend's daddy, so it's personal for me because um, I spent quite a bit of time in and out of the family home. Uh, John was always there keeping us right and, and keeping us out of bother as well. Um, sometimes we just don't show enough appreciation for people when they're with us. Um, but if you had tried to recognise John when he was here, he wouldn't have had any of it. Um, so I just think that given John's commitment, and dedication to his work with the council, that it's important we recognise that, uh, send our support and condolences to his family, friends and colleagues who are feeling the loss. 
And my thoughts are with John's wife, Eileen, and their children, Lisa, Kevin, Orla, Sean, Niall, Aileen and Declan, and all the ground wings. And I just think it would be nice if you as mayor got right to the family offering the condolences as a council. Of course, thank you. Councillor McGinley, Councillor Tierney. Thank you, Mayor, um, and thanks to Councillor McGinley for, for, for bringing this up. Um, I, too, knew John Allen. Um, I used to run about with Kevin whenever I was younger. I think I knew John Allen before he came on the council. Um, John was a quiet, civil big man um, who... John and Eileen together done an awful lot for, for young people of my age growing up um, and around that part of the bogside um, during political time, whenever you think about the, the, the Drum Cree um, debacle that we were going through, John and Eileen and others um, and in around that area, definitely um, done a lot uh, for, for, for young people um, in that area. I was, you know, you can't understand what the family are going through. I know um, that uh, John was a, was a quiet fella, but um, had such a presence um, within um, that family and within uh, the, the wider Bogside community. I know the, the gas yard fella do a, a big breakfast down at the front of the of, of the home. Um, that started long before it became a gas yard fella event, um, when Eileen and John and Rose Duffy and others um, were, were out um, looking after young people and making sure um, that they were best well behaved um, during a difficult time at the summer. Um, and that's how um, I remember John Allen um, and his family. Obviously, he has played a, a vital role within council from the Brandywell Skips um, to the, the, the Bunlaris and every other role that he's played. And I know that his colleagues um, <laughs> put on a bit of a show for him on the, on uh, his way to, to, to the church for, for, his, for his funeral. Um, I think it is important, Mayor, that you do acknowledge the, the commitment and the hard work of people who represent this council on a daily basis um, in our communities and making sure, you know, sometimes we put in requests and they go in at an officer level. But it's people like John Allen and the guys on the lorries who actually carry out those requests and without them, this council will be lost. There's no two ways about it. I have already expressed my um, condolences to the family, um, but on behalf of the SDLP, we thank the family um, for John's work and commitment to this council area, um, and we offer our heartfelt condolences uh, to Eileen um, and all of the children and grandchildren. I know um, Councillor McGinley had a list there. I don't have it written down, and I'm afraid to leave somebody out, so I'm not going to read them out. Um, but to all of the family, we offer our heartfelt condolences. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Tierney. And again, thank you, Councillor McGinley, for raising the issue. I didn't know John, um, but over the course of the last week, I have heard a lot of the council staff talking about John, and it's evident that he was a bit of crack and that he was well loved amongst his colleagues. So um, I will gladly write a letter of condolence to the to the family at, the, at this time and send our all all of our condolences to the, to them. Um, so thank you for that. Next is Alderman Hussey. Uh, thank you, Mayor. And just to explain my voice, I think my comment at this stage will. Last night, I had the privilege of attending the semi-final of the Irish Junior Cup involving Derrickview Reserves and Coal Island Athletic the holders of the cup. Derby Reserves won that game and will now uh, be playing in the final at the National Stadium at Windsor Park on May Day. And I wish to extend my sincere congratulations to the team, to the management and the backroom staff. Last night, those young players from our area showed a 100% commitment uh, that afforded them the, the uh, ability to take on and beat the current holders of that cup. Uh, you yourself, Mayor, uh, expressed your delight at Derry City and their achievement. Uh, this, to me, is just as remarkable, uh, having reached the final. And I trust and pray that uh, they will be successful in that final. We don't know who the opponents will be yet. 
uh, because that semi-final is taking place tonight. Uh, but I would hope going forward uh, that if they are successful, recognition will be forthcoming. But we'll deal with that after that final has taken place. But just to, to say, well done, Derby Reserves. Thank you. Godwin Hossey, Councillor McKee. Well, good evening, thank you, Mayor. And likewise, I just would like to uh, concur with all the man Hussey's remarks and offer my congratulations to their view reserves and commiserations, of course, uh, to Coal Island. Thank you, Chair. Councillor Edwards. Thank you, Mayor. And just to echo the comments of the two previous speakers, and I want to congratulate um, their view um, for reaching the final. And uh, I wish them all the best in the final. I was speaking to a few of the players this morning, uh, one on Straban, they're, they're absolutely delighted. But it's good to see um, the team doing so well. And again, I wish them all the best in the final. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. It's always good to see sporting achievements across the city and district. So um, congratulations on their one. And I wish them all the best for the final. Um, moving on, that concludes Chairperson's business. So thank you all for that. Oops. Um, so, moving on to the confirmation of the open minutes of the meeting of Council on Wednesday, the 22nd of February. Um, could I get a proposer and seconder for accuracy to begin with? So, Councilor Tierney Alderman Devaney, or and Councilor, uh, Alderman Devaney seconded. Matters rising, um, Councillor Jackson. Good morning, Um it's C66 forward slash 23 on the Craigan Reservoir. Um, Mayor, at last full council meeting, um, I had raised this and um, and highlighted the, the concern or the or for concern that we had that we hadn't received an update paper. Um, I fully appreciate that an update paper was provided to. Um, in environment and regeneration, and I can understand the confidentiality and the reasons why that was that wasn't done in open business. But, um, Mayor, at, at last full council meeting, and it, it isn't it isn't clear in the minutes, but um, at the last full council meeting, we were advised that the update paper um, was common. We were advised that there had been work being carried out um, at a senior officer level um, they, they try and, and we, we were given an indication that it was that there was a positive outcome um, Mayor, the outcome um, that was presented at the environment and regeneration meeting wasn't positive from our perspective and I know it's contained within the minutes and, and at that meeting um, members highlighted their frustrations and disappointment um, that we we ha we haven't we're we're not at a stage where we can we can see a pathway or, or an, a, a positive outcome. There's funding applications that are pending, um, but I, since since that paper has been uh, as uh, was discussed, I've been contacted, and we as a party have been contacted, primarily by community organisations um, that. Have got planning applications in the in, in the system for for a community centre in the Glen. There's other there's other applications um, that are that are being held up uh, because we need to resolve the issues at the at the reservoir, and it's uh, I, I, we would like to see a renewed sort of focus and some sort of time frame around how we can overcome this and give give that reassurance and uh, to to those that have got an interest in, uh, in, in investing in our city and district to deliver in um, facilities for for our communities and at the moment it's all very vague uh, it's very vague in terms of there's an application um, that's being worked on to submit the dfc and, and all of that and we certainly don't have the positivity um that uh that that, that we have been indicated that had been indicated previously so I, I this was raised at uh in open business 
last month. And I, I feel that it's only right that we raise it again and ask officers to come back and give us some sort of an indication or give us some sort of a commitment that this will be a priority for council, um, that we will find a solution to this and we will unlock the, 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 the constraints that have been placed, uh, 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 placed upon those planning applications that are that are that have sort of reached a brick wall um, because of issues surrounding Craig and Reservoir. Um, thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Jackson. Councillor Harkin, on this, because I have you down for as well under matters arising. Yeah. Yes. You're right. Separate. Oh, go ahead. I, I, yeah, I have a few things, or we have a few things today that we want to raise in matters arising. So, yeah, look, we were planning to raise this today. Obviously, this is the last full council meeting of this mandate. And one of the issues pertaining to uh, Craig and Reservoir that we uh, raised quite a while ago was the idea of creating a master plan for Craig and Country Park. Um, we still think that it's a priority that this area is fully redeveloped and regenerated. Um, uh, primarily for the people of Craigan, for the people of Glen Owen, and people, the people of Rosemount, um, addressing the flooding issue um, is part of part of that. But it's not the sole issue because, in some ways, uh, that's about people downstream from the reservoirs. This is about Craigan Country Park itself, because, uh, as has been agreed in this chamber, this is a potential gem for the district. It's been uh, long neglected in terms of funding. Um, uh, Jerry Quinn and others do a great job there, uh, but to turn this into the the uh, what it can be is going to take, I think, the the, the council uh, getting behind it. I know that there's work that's been going on in this, uh, but it's been taking quite a while, and it, for, from our perspective, it's not very visible. Uh, so when people ask us what's happened to the proposal to redevelop and regenerate the uh, Craig and Country Park. We don't have a lot to tell them. Um, so, um, uh, you know, I suppose after May, I would like to see the council officers producing a paper that actually documents where we are in terms of moving forward, uh, a master plan, so that uh, the people that live in that area can fully enjoy uh, and utilise Craig and Country Park, because it's it's not open to the public in the way that it should be. Um, there's just not the resources there right now for that. But this is something that people right across the district can definitely enjoy. Um, so that's what we wanted to get uh, on, on paper today. Thank you, Mayor. Constantine. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I hadn't planned to, to, to speak on this, but People may be glad to hear that John Boyle's voice is gone. So he's just messaged me to, and, and asked me to, to, to step on, take that way, whatever way you want. Um, I think listening to the two previous speakers, um, what I'm hearing is being asked for here is number one, any blockage to the planning system um, by the potential, and I use that word very loosely, potential flooding of the reservoir. Um, any blockages there, um, the council, need to do work on, then we do need to see um, some type of urgency because if it's holding up other projects and other plans that we have as a, as a city industrial council, then we need, to, we need to address them because the last thing we want is projects sitting spade ready and that planning being the difficulty around that particular issue um, at the reservoir, regardless of how likely or not it is to actually be a problem. The second part that I heard from, from Councillor Harkin, again, which, which we agree with, is around a master plan for, for, for Craig and Country Park. We have no issue um, with that, and we would like to see um, Craig and Country Park and every other um, part of this city and district with a plan and, and, a, and a focus of, of where we're going. So if that's what we're, we're looking at um, after May, um, or between now and May, and in the hope that, as Councillor Harkin mentioned, that a paper will be brought forward then, then we're happy um, to support that as well, but anything that we can do to enhance the experience up around Craig and Country Park for locals and visitors, and then also, I suppose, uh, address the, the, the planning issues there as well. I'm also just wondering what levelling up, where, where does that come under the, to the equation um, around Craig and Country Park and, and the reservoir, and if we could get, I suppose, an update um, on that. Um, I think that would be useful as well in terms of when you're looking at that um, master plan idea that, that, that Councillor Harkin is, is messaging. Thanks a million. 
Thank you, um, Councillor Tierney, and in particular around the Craig and Reservoir issue and the planning. I know I've been having several conversations with people as mayor out and about um, who have great concerns around planning applications and the implications. So I'm going to bring in the Chief Executive um, for a quick update. Thanks, Mayor. And I'll also ask um, the Director of Environment and Regeneration to comment as well. Um, there are three sort of separate but interlinked issues. Um, the first is um, that Council has assumed, assuming you endorse this paper today, um, the role of a responsible reservoir manager. Um, that should assist greatly in terms of a number of the planning applications that uh, may come forward, depending on where they are with the, the flood inundation maps that are produced by uh, DFI. So this will move some of these issues on. Um, the second issue are the critical health and safety works that need to be undertaken um, at the reservoir. We're giving a commitment to undertake those, which again should move some of those planning issues on. What we're currently trying to do is seek funding for that. We don't actually have to do that work, as I understand it, at this moment in time. We just simply have to give a commitment that we are the reservoir um, manager. Mm -hmm and that we will undertake these critical health and safety works at some point in the near future. And that's what we're doing. So we should be, through those two actions, um, providing that clarity and unlocking some of the issues associated with a planning application. Again, depending on where the application is, if some of them are in the red zones, as I understand that this action will not alleviate those concerns and couldn't alleviate those concerns, and the third issue is the master plan. Karen might be able to up to date further in that, but we have drafted a master plan. We did submit it as part of a very comprehensive bid into the levelling up fund round two. As we know, um, it wasn't successful at that stage, but it is there. It is live. We will be looking for other funding opportunities. Um, they will be progressed um, as a matter of urgency as and when they uh, present themselves. And of course, they do sit alongside, as other councillors have mentioned, a number of um, many other priorities. So we are acting at pace across all fronts in what is a, quite a complicated space to navigate. And um, perhaps Karen can further update. Yeah, that, that's right, John. And again, members, we continue to engage with Craig Country Park, obviously, to agree um, arrangements with them in relation to this, and happy to bring an update report on uh, the master plan um, into the next committee that we can as soon as the election is over. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Jackson. And then I bring you in, Councillor Neil. Well, um, appreciate that, and, th and thanks, thanks, John and Karen for for the update. And I suppose further to that, um, can I request because uh, the ongoing engagement with Craig and Country Park is essential, and I think we're all we're, we're all um, committed, and and um, we're we're keen to see development and and a, and a full master plan in Craig and Country Park um, fulfilled, but. See in relation to um, engagement with those that have applications in the system, is there is there any possibility that the council can be proactive in terms of engaging with those um, those applicants who have planning applications that have been held up under FLD five, um, which um, is, is is prohibiting um, a positive. Uh, or, or a, det a determination of the planning application, if if there can be a bit of uh, if council can be proactive, they engage with those applicants, and they advise them in terms of what they need to do, or um, that that would certainly be helpful. Or advise them in terms of uh, you know, the implications of council uh, adopting the the reservoir management uh, role, um, because there there seems to be. Uh, a, a, a fair grey area because Mayor, you voted there to yourself. You know, there, there are people that are that are waiting for for that acknowledgement from council um, that that their application can proceed. And 
if they're if they're been and they're being misled or if they're not not misled is not the right word but if they, they don't quite understand if they're in the red zone or not i think that communication would be would be really really welcomed so thank you mayor okay I think it's just a, a quick question because obviously Councillor Harkin has already spoken uh, for us. But um, in the, it's great to hear that like a master plan sort of draft was developed for the level up fund. I'm just wondering, you know, whenever uh, that is, um, you know, agreed upon by council, will that be going out to public consultation? Then, so the local residents uh, of the area can feed into, you know, what they think of it, what's missing, what you know could or shouldn't be there. Um, and obviously, Craig and Country Park are a key stakeholder within this process. So, will they be, you know, or have they already been consulted on what the master plan looks like, or what does the consultation process with the local community look like? Thank you. Yes, thank you. I'm going to bring Karen back in. Yep, yep. Through you, Chair. Uh, members, certainly, obviously, we, we were developing this with Craig and Country Park in the run up to uh, the short time scale for application to leveling up funds. So we bring it into members in terms of, I suppose, showing members what, what has been developed to date um, and then subject to members view, we can consider how we take it forward in terms of engaging with other stakeholders and uh, residents in relation to it. And members, again, just to stress that it is subject to funding because we do not have a funding course for um, for this at the minute. But definitely looking at it. Mayor, if I could just add to that, um, add to what Karen has said about the master plan, um, we will bring a consultation strategy before members before we embark upon that, so that you can input into it when the time is right. Um, and also in relation to Councillor um, Jackson's request, um, I can provide you with the assurance that if any applicant um, within the planning service has queries that we can provide some clarification in respect of, um, we will proactively do that. If any member is aware of any applicant um, who um, who wishes uh, to see clarity on the issue, please please let us know, and we'll ensure that happens. Okay, thank you for that, um, Alderman Hussey. Thank you, Mayor. I have a couple of matters we're raising. Uh, starting with C71, 23 Riverine. Uh, and this actually arises out of a meeting that was held earlier in the week. Uh, Stephen was, was in attendance at that meeting, but uh, it was on another issue. <laughs> but the, the, this matter arose where I detected a severe level of disillusionment uh, re the Riverine project. Uh, and I wonder, can Stephen reflect on that? And is there any suggestion, uh, although this is a Donegal County Council-led project, th that uh, the animation uh, pro process in particular may suffer because of the dissolution that, that we heard tell of at that, that meeting. Elm was there as well. Chair, if I maybe comment first, and then Stephen can can comment. And again, um, Alderman Hussey, I, I do know that there there is certainly frustration um, in terms of um, this particular project. I attended the Riverine Forum meeting myself last week um, in order to engage with members of the forum and discuss with them how we take forward the project and the Peace Plus, and indeed to discuss with them the the animation issue and following on. From that, um, I met with the director from Donegal yesterday to talk about um, our strategy moving forward and how we might um, be able to uh, not only try the best that we can to take forward as much of the animation as we can, um, and we are currently engaging um, with SEUPB on that in terms of the Peace Action Plan in particular um, through Donegal, um, but also uh, had very good, robust conversations with members of the forum in terms of how we ensure community buy-in um, over the next number of weeks. So certainly it's something that we, uh, at, the, at the highest level, have been taken very, very seriously, and we recognise the need to continue to engage um, with them. I don't know, Stephen, if you want to maybe add to that. 
Mary, if I can just add that obviously I'm not involved directly with the Riverine project, but I attended that, that meeting on behalf of the, the council and the council officer. So I fed back the, a lot of what was discussed um, to a number of officers. We have a number of actions out of that, and we hope to pick up some of those points going forward directly in relation to what was in the meeting, but also in, in relation to some of those issues related, related and concerned about the, the Riverine project. So we are actively going to deal with that. Uh, and thanks for that, Mayor. And I know the the other element of that that meeting, the main element, still has to be uh, the verbal report but that will come later. Uh, can I move to C seventy six? Just, just one second, Councillor Harkin. I'm just checking. You're indicating separately. You don't want to come on Rivering. Go ahead. Uh, C76, the NH, uh, NHS uh, staff issue. Uh, I, I just want to express my dismay, and, and I'm sure it's reflected across the chamber, that the discrimination which we are now evidencing against health workers in Northern Ireland. Uh, we, we have seen, uh, you know, that health workers in England, health workers in Scotland, are are, are getting uh, their their pay raises, etc. Staff in Northern Ireland who are doing exactly the same work are not, and uh, I think it's it is pure discrimination that this pay party uh, is not forthcoming to the staff here in Northern Ireland. And I just want to make that comment, Mayor, on that particular item. Thank you, Councillor Harkin, on this. Thank you, Mayor, and yeah, look, thank you, uh, Alderman Hussey, for raising this issue. We were hoping to raise it at a different point, but since it's been raised now, um, we we 100% uh, agree. Um, and as a result of this discrimination, uh, our health and social care workers will be on the picket line on Friday and on Monday, and they are furious about this uh, treatment. Um, and I know the DUP have been ranting and raving and holding up Stormont and holding us all to ransom because they are saying the North is being treated differently from Britain. But here's a clear example of where workers from all communities are once again being treated differently from workers across the water. But I haven't heard a single word of complaint by the DUP, which just exposes the fact that this whole uh, thing about the protocol is nothing but an attempt by them to uh, get back some of their votes that they appear to be losing from to the TUV. Um, so the, the cynicism is there. Um, I, I think we have to be very clear as a council that we've stood with the workers taking like strike action and that we have to stand with them again. Um, I think we have to put the demand to the Secretary of State that uh, our health and social care workers are not discriminated against, that they are uh, fully included in any pay nego uh, discussions and negotiations and pay settlements. Um, and it's got the point where the Secretary of State and the Minister for the NIO don't even bother to turn up to meetings. They're not even meeting with the trade unions. So there's a just huge lack of respect for our workers here. Um, and I think we have to, as a council, speak out about it. Um, you know, the, the, the Tories are desperate to try and make some of these strikes go away, um, but the, the issues are clearly not resolved. So we, we have a very brief motion that we want to uh, put forward, which is basically the call on the Secretary of State to ensure that workers, uh, health and social care workers across the North are not discriminated against and treated differently uh, from workers um, elsewhere on these islands, and that they also engage with the trade unions for on pay, fair pay settlements. Um, so if I could send that to someone now, I'll, I'll be happy to do it. Happy to second that as well. Um, are you emailing it? Could you email it to Teresa? Yeah, yeah, thank you. A seconder? Alderman Hossack, thank you. Okay, um, Councillor Tierney, are you happy to speak? No, yeah. So thank you, Mayor, and I suppose thanks to Alderman Hussey um, for, for, for raising this issue. I will declare an interest as my wife's a nurse. Um, but I don't think that should prevent anyone who is a relative who works for the, for the health service voicing their complete disgust at the decision last night um, to allow um, an award pay increase to healthcare staff in England, Scotland and Wales and ignore the calls from healthcare staff here in the north. Um, how and 
the, the, the Secretary of State ever came to that position is absolutely beyond me. Um, and we should, and I will happily, we will happily support um, Councillor Harkin's proposal. I would respectfully suggest that we include in the proposal that we write to the Secretary of State, because if we call on him, we're not actually doing anything. Um, but we, he needs to hear and see um, our uh, objection to it as a council. I know um, from speaking to him this morning that our MP Colin Eastwood has already written to the Secretary of State um, demanding uh, that he use his power to ensure that nurses here in the north are treated the exact same as nurses elsewhere. And, you know, a nurse in Derry is as valuable to their patients as a nurse in Manchester or Cardiff or Glasgow or anywhere else, and they should be treated the exact same. They're not being treated the same, and we all know the reason why. The Secretary of State, in my opinion, made that decision last night to try and put pressure on the DUP to go back on the storm. We all know that in 2019 it wasn't put pressure from, at that time it was Julian Smith and Simon Coveney that forced um, parties back on the storm. It was pressure from healthcare workers who were on the picket line um, at that particular time that forced each and every letter of new decade, new approach agreement to be written and got the executive back up and running. And I think the Secretary of State is using the healthcare workers as an avenue to try and force the DUP back on the, on the, the executive. I don't think it's going to work. I'll give you two reasons why I don't think it's going to work. Number one, the DUP and Councillor Harkin touched on it know that there's a council election in a couple of weeks' time, and they are not going to go back on ahead of that. Number two, I also don't think that they'll go back on ahead of the marching season. So we're looking at September, at the very earliest, in my opinion, when the DUP will, be, will even consider going back on the storm. Out. We have a number of motions here today, including this one, that all rely on support from the executive for funding, for community transport, for youth workers, healthcare workers. The list is literally endless. And I know before other speakers come on, Stormage not the answer to everything. I get that. I appreciate that. Mr. Tierney, I need to be strict today. Sorry. No, I appreciate that, Mayor. It's a big role they play. And the DUP now need to stop this reckless behaviour, grow up, get back on the executive and start resolving the issues that thousands of people across our communities are facing on a daily basis. Thank you. Thank you, um, Councillor Doyle. Thank you, Mayor, and I agree with everything that's been said by the previous speakers. I mean, what's been offered uh, to staff in, in Britain is a 5% raise for all pay points and a one-off lump sum. Um, how the Northern Ireland office feel that they can't uh, offer that to uh, staff here uh, when they're doing the exact same job, uh, when they're on the exact same contracts, many of them, um, is ludicrous, and it absolutely reeks of... Uh, desperation from the NIO and from the Tories to try and push the DUP back uh, and the government. And you know, we might have an election coming up, but I have to say I agree with absolutely everything that Brian has just said with regards to the reasons why the DUP won't do that. I think we all know that. It's got to the point now where there doesn't seem to be anything, there doesn't seem to be any shameful point that comes up that affects people's lives uh, that will make the DUP blush. Um, it's certainly not going to make anybody in Belfast Castle blush at this point. Um, and we have to be seen very clearly to be coming out and supporting our staff um, and making sure that they are treated uh, fairly for the work they do. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Doyle. Um, Councillor McKinley. Thank you, Mayor. Just fully to declare an interest. Uh, my wife works for the NHS, and also we will fully support this motion. And I'm not going to DUP bash because I think that we've already heard it all anyhow from Councillor Tierney. Thank you. Thank you, um, Councillor Jackson. I'm going to be I suppose we could, we would concur with everything that's been said. Um, and we support the motion that's in front of us. Um, our health, and I, I will declare an interest as an employee in the Western Health and Social Care Trust. Um, as a party, we fully support um, the need for a fair pay settlement for our workers and or for our health workers and, and and safe staffing conditions. And it's already been outlined. I agree with everything that's been said. Um, we do need um, local institutions they try and and support workers here and 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 try and support our public services and 
the, the DUP's selfish um, and narrow-minded um, views uh, that, in, in, in terms of their decision to continue punishing our, our public services, is becoming untenable. And it's uh, and this uh, we're seeing it right across the board. It's not just in our our, our, our health and social care. Um, it's it's right across. Our public services, and um, that we we would agree that that the executive, the the, re, the the establishment of an executive, isn't going to resolve everything um, immediately. But there are parties that are keen. They work together. They address the issues that matter most, and the DUP are preventing us from doing that. So, in the absence of that, um, we are left. We're we're writing the British Secretary of State. Or uh, and and if if that's the options that are available to us, we would support it. I know um, our our uh, party, our vice president, um, Michelle O'Neill, has um, she's wrote to the British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak um, on this very issue. She's demanded a meeting, and because it's not good enough that that. The, the, the Tory party in Britain are completely ignoring the views of our workers here. They're, they're refusing to engage um, and take on board the, the views of our trade unions. Um, so uh, until that happens, we will continue to, to advocate on their behalf. Um, so, but, and this is another step, but we can do as a council, so we fully support the motion. Thanks, Mayor. Sorry, Alderman Devaney. Thank you, Mayor, for um, uh, allowing me in on this issue. And I have to say it has been a bit of a DUP bash and listen to the rest of them. But look, we will not take lectures from anyone else. We will decide in our own party what happens and how we manage the future uh, and how things. And I think our party leaders quite rightly said he, he is anxious to see Stormont up and running. But we know there are issues that need to be resolved. Uh, and look, we have got some movement in those issues where we had Sinn Féin and SDLP and Alliance talking about Brexit and around the strong implementation. We've got some risky bonuses that we've got there. And look, there are outstanding issues. In relation to the, the issue in front of us here, Mayor, um, quite rightly, uh, we support um, the proposal going forward here. We have no problem uh, in supporting fair pay for anyone. And I have to say, Mayor, further down the line at this meeting, we'll be discussing pay raises coming up and stuff like that. And we'll see who will support those who really need the pay raise then as we move forward. But on this issue, Mayor, I um, have no problem in supporting fair equality pay for our health workers out there, the same as what they have in, in GB mainland and around that area. Uh, and we support that. But I have to say it's a bit of hypocrisy from Sinn Féin talking about bringing down the keeping the assembly down. They kept it down for three years. And we pushed and pushed to get them to come back and come back. Uh, I look, they stayed out three years. But Mayor, thank you for that. Thank you, Alderman Devaney. Um, Councillor O'Neill. Uh, thank you, Mayor. And just a declaration of interest as a health and social care worker um, and UNISA you know, member who will be out in strike on Friday and on Monday. Um, and I think uh, the key thing here is that action action is key. Uh, writing this letter is backing up the strike action, which is actually making the difference. Uh, workers striking back across the board is is moving things along from when there was no money uh, for pay increases to actual offers being made. And I want to commend every health and social care worker who has taken that action because what, you know people are are feeling the reality of the cost of living crisis, and despite that, they're taking the action, taking a, a, a day's uh, taking a day's pay off themselves to actually fight back and and strike and stand up for the health and social care service because you know the thing is it's this isn't just about pay like workers on the ground are feeling in the absolute heat we've been warning of a crisis for years in the health and social care service and every day is a crisis in there every day is chaotic chaotic but people still go on keep their head up put a smile on their face and give the best patient care uh, that they possibly can um but it's unsustainable at this level uh, and so we just want to commend all the work all my co-workers and colleagues who are giving their all and fighting on the cold face of it during COVID and right now uh, and are also going to be fighting um, on the picket line. Thank you.
Thank you, Councillor O'Neill. Um, no further speakers and nobody speaking against the proposal, so I'm going to take it as passed. We'll go back to Alderman Hussey. Um, Thank you, Mayor. Mo moving, moving to um, C87, the Northwest Angling Fair. Uh, I just want to read the last paragraph of that. Uh, I felt there was broad agreement from members committed that future angling fairs would revert back to being held as rural events in rural areas. On the back of that, I wish to propose that future angling fairs will revert back to being held as rural events in rural areas in conjunction on a rota with Melbourne Sports Arena. Can we get that written down, please? You want to move on and I'll come back to it. I don't want to hold you up, Mary. <laughs> well, we, are you done with your matters arising? Is this your last matter ar arising? Uh, it, it was just a query. Uh, it, it was a query as to the Western Trust re-consultation. That was in C96, where we had asked that they would hold a consultation event in our council area. Has there been any response from the Trust on that? Thank you. Okay. Uh, Mayor members, it's to advise that the Trust um, sent us an interim response, um, which included a link to two online consultation events, um, and that was circulated to our health and community members. Uh, we haven't had a confirmation of the Trust of a physical meeting. Um, late yesterday afternoon, the Trust again furnished us with further updates, not necessarily in that specific um, issue, but it covered a range of issues um, the Trust were addressing. And again, that was circulated to health and community members this morning. I'm happy to circulate it more widely to other members if that's needed. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Yeah, it might be useful if you just circulate it um, round us all. OK, we've got the proposal. We'll get it on screen now. Um, just ask for a seconder. Do you have a seconder? I'll second it, Mayor Morris. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Devenick. I think there's an extra being held in there. Two being held.
Okay, um, thank you, um, Councillor Edwards, to begin with. Mayor, thank you. Well, I'm minded to support this, but I just want to ask, is there any funding implications on this, if there's any officers there? Um, will, will funding for the event be impacted at all, if there's any officers can answer that? Okay, thank you. Um, Stephen, can we bring you in on that question? Happy to come in on that. I mean, there's there's kind of two issues in terms of costs. I mean, it is more expensive, as we've mentioned before in committee, to hold the event outside of Sraban because of the naturally the Melvin Sports Centre. We don't have to provide that infrastructure anywhere else, so there is a cost. When we held it in Castle Derg two, three years ago, whatever it was, I can't exactly remember. It was an additional ten thousand pounds over the, the budget for Sraban. There's also an issue with uh, this year. The locks agency are co-funding it. As members will be aware, the issue in rates was that uh, we would go to every other year. But the locks agency will come in with, the, with match funding, which allows us to continue to hold this event every year. Their preference and their stipulation this year is that it's in Stravan. Obviously, next year we would re-enter negotiations with uh, the locks agency and bring a subsequent paper back. Um, the event is going ahead this weekend in, in Stravan, but they are the two funding implications that relate to the event. Is it one, it's more expensive to hold it outside of Stravan, that's just fact. And two, the preference from the locks agency is as now a co-funder, or that it remains in Stravan. Thank you for that information, um, Stephen. Councillor Edwards, would you like to come back in? Because that was just a question. Go ahead. Yeah, thanks very much. That clarifies it. Um, you know, um, at their councillor, I, I don't see any issue alternating this event um, between or Straban, Castle Derg, and Newton Stewart. So they were happy to support uh, the motion to by Alderman Hussey. Thank you. Um, councillor Gallagher. Thank you, Mayor, for letting us in. I think, you know, and go back to Stephen, I think. Uh, the, there's probably more implications than, than the two that you mentioned. That, that this was run in Straban and was run very successfully in Straban. And there was a lot of various providers to turn up on the day. Uh, and along with those, was bringing tourists that were coming along with them and they were bringing uh, night hotel beds, whatever description you want to call it, they were coming from afar. Do you see when it went to Castle Derg? It was a disaster. And that's what it was, a disaster. And if we go back and we look at the evaluation, it was a disaster. And if it goes back to Castle Derg, there's going to be major implications of providers not turning up and it being a smaller event. And I think that before this goes to the floor, where that them considerations need to be taken on board. And I think that possibly that there's no rush in this motion that this could come back to a further one based on a detailed report of the disaster of going to Castle Derrick. And what I would suggest, and I understand councillors depend on the, the, the district area, 100%, but I think that there should be a possibly, if there's an interest, a smaller type event going to Castle Derrick. No problem. But not taking this event out of Straban Town. That, look, I'm, I'm not making this up. It's not. It was a disaster. And officers can comment or refuse to comment, but the evaluations were done. Feedback from people that, that cost, they cost money for them to travel this event, to set up stalls, and to get an expected return. Didn't materialise in Castle Derg. I'm sorry to say for the people of Castle Derg, it didn't. And I don't think that once we've created an event in Straban that's been success, what is this council doing? Voting? They knock it on the head. Because that's effectively what this decision will do knock a perfectly good event and kill it dead. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Gallagher and Councillor McKee. Well, I'm good chair. Um, kind of exasperated to listen to Councillor Gallagher there talking about the disaster that the Northwest England Fair was when it was held in Castle Derg. Um, I'd like to remind Councillor Gallagher that this event was also held, um, I think it was in Newton Stewart before, and it was uh, 
equally as successful there as it was in Castle Derg and Straban, all uh, excellent venues in their own right. Um, I don't know how Councillor Gallagher can refer to it as being a disaster in Castle Derg. I was there in the two days. I never seen Councillor Gallagher there, so how would I know it was a disaster? Um, I quite I can understand why some of the maybe the the fly or the fishing supply people want to remain in Strabane because you know that's where their businesses are based and they don't want to move out of Strabane. Totally understand that. But the, the England experience that the Northwest region offers everybody is fantastic. Um, you have the Derg River, you have tributaries to the Derg River, you have the Morn, obviously, uh, which comes through Newton Stewart as well, the Strull, uh, the Glen Morning. Um, I totally accept that perhaps Melvin is the best venue. It might be a 9 out of 10, but certainly Castle Derg is 8 out of 10. Uh, if not 9 out of 10, and Newton Stewart as well. Um, the Castle Derg event, when it did come there, um, it had to be kind of moved at short notice, and uh, which probably affected the uh, the total impact of the event, but it was still uh, a very successful event attended by a large number of people. And surely that had a knock-on effect um, for the community in Castle Derg. And I do know that people, you know, stayed in hotel the, the fir trees in Strabane. So, you know, it's about the whole district. It's not just about uh, Strabane Town. Um, and a final point I'd just like to make, the, I made this point previously as well, about the Locks Agency um, being co-funders of it. Um, no, it's up to Locks Agency, yeah, whoever they wish to fund, but they shouldn't be um, essentially threatening Council that if it's, if it's if it's not in Strabane, we're not going to fund it. I mean, the Council wants to hold the North Northwest Island Fair. Uh, the Lo the Locks Agency should be should be champing at the butt to to fund uh, an event such as this, no matter where it is. Um, I attended the AGM of my local club. Yeah. Finishing this point, I attended the AGM of my local angling club, club and there was a locks agency representative there who spoke to all the, the people there and he was more than uh, positive about what he could do for angling and the, the Derg area. So you know, I'm a bit surprised to hear that from the locks agency and I suspect it's probably down to being lobbied by the same maybe uh, self-interested businessman who, whose only real interest maybe might be their pocket. Thank you. Okay, Councillor McKay and um, Councillor Ferguson. Thank you, Mayor. Mayor. Uh, on the face of it, I have the no issue with, with the proposal. Um, I'm obviously trying to go through the business and culture minutes from memory and go back and get the implications. But I think, Mayor, I think at the very start of this, you did say that there wasn't going to be proposals, and this is one of the issues. Is I would like to see the numbers in comparison to what it was like whenever it was floating around, because I think these can be very important to smaller um, smaller villages in comparison to where it is now at the moment in Straban. But at the same time, we've just gone through a very difficult rates process and we're talking about the rates implications of that. So where I, I, I fully support the idea behind it because I, I would love for these smaller rural villages to have these events. I think it's unfair to just kind of this out there without us being, I, I've read the minutes, but actually going back and, and seeing all the implications, it's, yes. um, I just need a bit more detail, Mayor, to, before we can make a decision on Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Ferguson. Um, Councillor Donnelly. So, uh, thanks, Chair. Chair, look, uh, if somebody is neither from Straban or Derg or Newton Stewart, and, and is not au fait with what has happened or what is, Look, there's points made here by Councillor Gallagher that, that this could be the death of it. And I, I I think that we should, rather than make a decision here now on it, we should get information for councillors to digest or analyse. Uh, look, I'll use the example, Mayor, you were there. We, we just had a meeting with traders and they they were of the opinion that you won't start market stops it's not going to come back and we 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 had heard testimonies from these traders of how important it was the livelihoods and social interaction so i think it's it's probably the most sensible thing is that if, 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 if members are furnished with more information then we could make a, an informed decision thank you 
Thank you, um, Councillor Donnelly. And I, I, I do tend to agree without swaying um, the room. I have Councillor Michaela Boyle on line as well. Uh, Mayor, before that, could I make a slight amendment to the proposal? Can we have Michaela first? Uh, and then I'll may, go back I may to address you. the issue that people. Yeah, I'm going to bring uh, in Michaela first. That council officers investigate. Can we bring in Michaela first? Thank you. Mayor, thank you. Um, I'm listening to everybody uh, speak and uh, have their say on it. Um, obviously, this is a, a very um, emotive um, pop-up proposal, in my opinion. Um, I understand from the aldermen and councillors in the Derrick area, um, they're passionate to have this um, uh, in their uh, area on, on, on a rotational basis. And I can fully understand that, Mayor. I was in a meeting this morning, uh, a rural, um, not in the rural issues group, but the meeting before that, and we talked a, a lot about the uh, rural, um, the carve up in the rural areas, and in and, and terms of, you know, urban areas. Um, so I do think yes, absolutely, and I fully appreciate that Melvin has the facilities there, and it's it's, it's less cost effective to council in that regard. But um, I, I do understand where the other uh, other uh, rural councillors are, are, are coming from. So, I mean, certainly today, I don't feel that we should be making a decision on this. I would be of the opinion of, you know, more information coming back in terms of cost and how we can do this going forward. Um, we don't want to set a precedent that it'll always be Melvin. I, I totally uh, understand that. Uh, whilst it is probably the best preferred option, but when you look at the rivers around us um, in those particular areas, uh, Castle Derg and, uh, and Newton's Church, you know, everybody should also have the opportunity to have this in their area. So, Mayor, um, I would be proposed a, a deferment maybe on this um, uh, to get, you know, further information on this today, if, if, if people would be happy enough to have that deferment when the officers brought back more information or even maybe a group of the councillors coming together to discuss this outside of uh, this meeting. Thank you, Mayor. Okay, um, so we have um, Councillor Boyle um, going to amend that to ask for a deferral and possibly a working group. Um, if you could just put that in the chat box, please, Councillor Boyle, and I'll ask for a seconder for that. You second it, Councillor Tierney? Sorry? You, uh, just a second. Are you second in the proposal to defer? Thank you very much. Excellent. Um, okay, so on that note, Councillor Tierney. Thank you, Mayor. Um, and I point out, obviously, Councillor Edwards has, has spoken to this already on our behalf. Um, but listening to concerns from people from Castle Derg, I can understand why you would want this to revert back to uh, year about, if you like. And then listening to people from Straban and the, the issues that they feel that this brings and the, and the potential detrimental impact um, of funding, um, I think it is important that we take an informed decision and that we do have some of the, 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 the figures there, some of the uh, testimonies, as, as Councillor Gallagher referred to, and we work out not just what's best for my area, but what's best for this particular event. And I think doing that, hopefully we will get and be able to get the best out of the North West Anglo Fair as we can, regardless of where it is. But throwing it at us today without having the detailed information um, and almost forcing us down a line where we have to decide what's best for, for this within a space of five or ten minutes may not be the best decision-making process that we're going through. So I would be happily, on behalf of the SDLP, to support a deferral with further information coming back to make the right decision for the Anglin Fair not just for a particular part of the council area. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Alderman Hussey, I'm going to afford you the opportunity to come back in. Uh, thank you. I've spoken to my seconder, and we're prepared to accept uh, the uh, amendment. Uh, but commenting then on, on, on the overall, uh, I'd just like to remind members that this particular event is a legacy event from Straman District Council. 
and its specific aim was to have events beyond the urban area. Uh, the first one, as Councillor McHugh has referred to, was actually in Newton Stewart, uh, as opposed to, to Castle Derg. Uh, and you know, that was the, the very essence of having this event. So to prescribe that it should be solely within the urban area, i.e. Straban, would be wrong. Uh, and I mean, if it was a case of funding, w would this council be prepared to say, right, uh, OK, we're, we're cancelling St. Patrick's Day because it's costing too much? You know, uh, and council invests in events for the, the population, invests yeah, in yeah, events yeah, yeah, for yeah, the population, yeah, 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 which is yeah, what should be done. Thank yeah, you, Mayor. This, this, Mayor, cursed up a while here. This has been done, it's been heard, and Alderman Hussey has been heard as well. Can we move on to the next piece of business, please? Thank you, Thank you for that, Councillor Boyd. Um, yes, um, I'm, I'm going to say this, and I am glad that we have come to the decision that we're that we are going to defer this item, and I have to concur with people who have raised concerns. I understand the, the concern that um, people from the Derrick have in terms of this, this issue, but when the whole chamber isn't appraised of information or over the detail of a proposal, it's unfair to expect a decision to be taken, particularly a decision that will have um, impacts on our financial situation, considering we've just come through a very bruising rates process. And um, I, I see the further the next year to be equally as bruising, to be quite honest. Um, so I think that it's only fair that this item is deferred. And, and we allow things to have due consideration. If something is important enough, it can come as a proper motion where people can give it due consideration. And I think that's only fair. And I see your um, comment in the chat box, Councillor Boyle, around this being a pop-up motion. And I do agree around the pop-up. I think that it is important that people be given the opportunity to do their research and come to proper considered decisions. So on that note, I Mayor, if it is if it is without standing orders, I withdraw the motion, but it is within standing okay, orders. I, 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 can be I, I understand that that it, it understand orders, it is a valid proposal, but I would just say please give people the opportunity to have due consideration of items. That's it. To make good democratic decisions. Um, moving on to next in terms of matters arising, and I have Councillor Harkin. Thank you, Mayor. If I can uh, direct everybody's attention to C7523. And um, obviously, the issue of potholes is a huge one in Derry and across the district. And lots of us have been agitating with the DFA to get potholes fixed. Um, and it was, uh, it was not good that the road service workers felt compelled to go on strike for a week. Um, because that simply delayed the uh, fixing of potholes. And I want to commend our road service workers for the dedication they show week in, week out, no matter what the weather is, and despite their pay and despite their frustrations, to fixing uh, you know, the many potholes that we have in our road network. Um, I've been talking to some road service workers, and unfortunately the issue hasn't been resolved yet. It's out of the news, but it hasn't been resolved. And um, if people remember back to the actual strike, there's a few things I think uh, that Council needs to be very aware of. We had senior DFA management officials going on the news saying that there could be serious accidents as a result of the strike and basically blaming, demonising workers for any potential hazards and injuries that might come from this um, and because we were facing um, uh, some bad weather. So I, I spoke to workers that week and asked them how management was having them prepare for the fact that they would be working the road because they were working eight to four. It was about after work uh, when there might be an emergency. And I was told by workers that they have us doing exactly the same as we would do week in, week out. So we had senior DFA management officials on TV, on radio, demonizing workers, and then basically having them out fixing gullies instead of doing what would be termed laying the lay, uh, taking care of uh, what would be emergencies um, 
and I, I thought that there was a clear disconnect uh, from any any urgency by management to prepare the ground for the strike uh, or for the for the work to rule action. So um, I, I would like council to um, call on the permanent secretary of the DFA to make sure that. Uh, workers are not demonised. It's highly likely that workers, unfortunately, will be going out on strike again because management has made no offers, no improvements. They are maintaining this entirely a, a Victorian and abusive uh, bonus system that has to go. Um, and I think we have to be urging DFA to resolve this matter as soon as quickly. Um, if they don't, the strike is not going to be one week this time. It's likely to be a month. And a month of us without getting our potholes fixed, we'll actually see a much worse uh, road network. And then that will actually lead to potentially more accidents. But also, the, the I, I know DFI is paying out millions in compensation to drivers because of damaged cars and probably with blash and other things as a result. So, you know, this is really on DFI. DFA to, to rectify this and resolve this as soon as possible. Um, so I, I would like us to follow up our earlier call on them to, uh, uh, you know, where we made it clear we support the workers to basically end the demonization of workers and resolve this dispute uh, as quickly as possible so, so our roads aren't wrecked and people aren't uh, threatened as a result. And I've sent a, a, a short um, uh, motion to uh, uh, Theresa, if she can pop it up there. Thank you, Councillor Harkin. Do you have a seconder? Councillor Neil. Thank you. Okay, um, it's a valid proposal. Councillor Dodd. Fully support the proposal, Mayor. You know, the, the whole situation with DFI in the Northwest at the moment is becoming absolutely intolerable. Intolerable, roller Between demonizing staff and the, the almost inaction in terms of what is now becoming a genuine emergency on the roads. You know, I got a, a message sent to me yesterday by a constituent um, who now has to get two new tyres uh, because just on the, the Lenamore Junction, uh, coming around the corner from the, uh, the gate school. And this is ailing up. And I'm sure colleagues right across the chamber have been getting the exact same. Um, I would nearly say now that there are officials in DFA somewhere that are processing more compensation claims than they are putting... Uh, the roads, right? It's. It, it seems to me that even when you now report something, it, it's almost like that uh, graphic that was uh, that people might have seen on on social media. That meme where something comes out of the fax machine and goes under the shredder and under the bun, because there doesn't seem to be anything being done about it. And when workers are being demonised in the way they are, that's totally unacceptable from one end. Then the pressure is coming from the other end. It is something has got to give, and you know we've had officials on here from DFI before, and it's almost like they come in with a, a an agreed script, uh, you know about budgets, but it has got to the stage where you know if if this is what's going on, and and I've no reason to believe they disbelieve what Shauna says, then there's a serious problem in road service, you know, and it's almost an existential problem at this time because, you know, 
as someone who doesn't drive, when I look at the roads now, I'm nearly glad uh, because they are concert driving. And it's very, very important that people know that we support them as workers. But that we're also going to hold those officials to account and senior management. Thank you. Okay, Councillor Jackson. Um, Grandma Good Mayor, and um, we fully support the motion and we've stood on the picket line with um the with our road service workers and and it, it is disgraceful um that that the workers within and people that are provide a much needed and valuable service um are are treated in such ways and we all agree that our our roads are in dreadful condition um and there there doesn't seem to be once once one pothole is is repaired there's there's six more appears uh, it it uh the and part of this is that the system isn't working the the bonus system that's applied to the workers um is is something from prehistoric times it's uh it it it's unheard of in a modern society, and it boils down to the fact that the workers don't feel that they're trusted. Um, that you know, they they go out and they can see defects in roads, but if it's not on a list, they'll not get paid. Um, they they carry it out. Speaking to workers, they've highlighted major concerns around the wastage that, that with that, particularly within um, the the local office here in the city, and. Workers understand that this is public money. They know the public money can be spent better. Um, but management or the system isn't flexible enough. They, they, they listen to their concerns or listen to their feedback. So the system needs to change. The bonus system needs scrapped completely. Um, the DFA need to trust the workers that are delivering on the ground that are that are working hard to, to address Step. the problems. Um, so uh, we fully support the motion. Thank you, Mayor. Councillor Tierney. Thank you, Mayor. Um, we'll also be supporting the motion. Um, not only um, the the points around the road network, which were have already been been, been well made by by all our members, um, but also around the I suppose the morale of the workers, um, and that is. Vite, equally as important um, as repairing the road the, the, the road network um, and how they're been treated. I would agree with Councillor Jackson around the bonus system. You just you just wouldn't hear of that in any other um, organisation that is anyway trying to to look after workers and and, and treat them fairly. It's incredible um, that that they actually get away with it. To be to be honest. Um, the stuff around the road network, you know, it is almost, and I can fully appreciate what Councillor Doyle said about that social media meme. Um, I, I, I do get it and I, and I understand it. I had one at the, at the entrance of Elikmore, there was four potholes and they came and fixed one and drove away. No, that's not the fault of the workers. It's the fault of the, of the people who are deciding whether or not your pothole meets the requirement or not. It is almost as if your query is fed on the computer and when the computer says no, there is no um, adjustment whatsoever. Um, it is a very strict um, process. It's not um, fit for purpose, in, in, in my view, and it's something uh, that we should absolutely be, be fighting to change and act, speaking up and supporting the workforce because they are the people who receive the the, the blame and people who um, at the cold fish and, and are where our constituents are dissatisfied. It's not with the, with the senior management. It should be, um, but it's often directed at those on the ground trying to do it. Um, so we fully support the, the proposal here. Um, but this isn't our job, Mayor. This is the job. Attorney. Yep, this is the job of an infrastructure committee at Stormont. And once again, they can't do that work. We all know why. Um, I think I was earlier on accused of DUP bashing. I'm not going to get into it. But that's their role. That's the role um, and the oversight body position that they have, and they should be carrying it out. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Tierney. Next up is Alderman Mark. See when I say your name, it's your time's up. 
<laughs> Alderman Lark. Here, here, Mayor. Um, uh, Mayor, uh, a welcome is here. A welcome is proposal from Council Hargan. I was on the the picket line along with himself, and we heard the frustration of workers, and we had many calls from the workers after that. Now, one really frustrated me was uh, where our warnings coming on, where um, more or less the cold spell coming on. Now, we had the workers contacting us about salt pies empty, salt boxes empty throughout the city district, which is going to put people in danger. Now. Contact the senior management at the minute. It's just going one year out the door. So we went to media on this here, and I was just actually looking up this year, but here with the responses. The DFA said the disruption with their service, such as gridding, is part of the continued strike action over pay structures. They're blaming the workers. Continue, continue, continue. You know, so I encourage young workers to get back out and strike and fight for what is right. These bonuses are absolutely crazy. There's no more job in the civil service where these workers are getting this year. And I encourage everybody in this chamber to date back the workers. So uh, thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Alderman Mark. Alderman Devaney. Thank you, Mayor, for uh, allowing me in. And look, we have no problem uh, in supporting um, the proposal or the notice of motion going forward here today um, in relation to this. Um, uh, and support of our workers out there. And our, the, the workers of DFI are not to blame. Uh, it's a system and the profile uh, and around it. And Mayor, you've been around a rightly while around this chamber and this is nothing new to this chamber or this these, our full council regarding potholes. It has been going on this last decade or more and we've been calling for more funding to resolve the issues. Um, sticking plasters are put over it uh, and at the end of the day, it doesn't work. Uh, and I have to say, I agree. Some of the speakers have mentioned about coming out four potholes. One meets the criteria, the other three doesn't, so they're not repaired. The same when it comes to um, tidying up gullies, cleaning out gullies. They come and clean out the gullies, and the workmen cleaning out the gully knows it's a waste of time because the line isn't, uh, the line is blocked between one gully and the other, and that has to go in for a separate job card before they can come out and jet the line to ensure that the water gets away freely. But we have no problem uh, uh, in supporting the, the proposal here, Mayor. Thanks. Thank you. Alderman Hussey. Uh, similarly, absolutely no uh, hesitation in supporting this motion. Um, and, and I trust all others will. Um, I, I just want to refer to, to one item that I've seen on, on the news, and that was the workers, you know, the, the, they were in strike. But what were the department able to do? They were able to have private contractors lined up with their own vehicles ready to take on the work. How much did that cost? So, you know, false economy within the department, treat their own staff properly rather than uh, spreading money to others uh, and, and probably at a much higher cost support the motion. Thank you. And finally, Councillor Ferguson. Mayor, just to add on, we have absolutely no problem supporting the motion and supporting the workers when it comes to their calls to scrap the, the things like the bonus system. I think this is unfortunately the way in which our politics goes, where um, big pundits like to have a viral response um, and they like to pick on, especially when it comes to strikes and worst case scenario. And ultimately, it comes down to it should have been better managed and planned for by the, the management itself. They knew the strikes were coming up. They knew that this was happening and and they knew that the weather was coming into and to put it back on the workers is unfair. So Mayor, we have no problem at all um, supporting the pop-up motion. Thank you very much, Councillor Ferguson. Um, before we take a vote, and I don't think that a vote is actually necessary, but I'm going to bring in the City Solicitor. Yeah, members, on the assumption that the, the motion is, is passed here today, and I believe that's the, uh, the likely thing, uh, members, I do have some brief concerns, just ex exactly the wording of the correspondence that will go out from the Council, but I'll liaise with members afterwards, um, just to ensure that, that, that the correspondence that go out is, is something that is um, proper and acceptable. Thank you. Thank you, Philip. Um, so, um, unanimously supported. 
So thank you, Councillor Harkin. Um, Councillor Harkin, you have a further matter arising? Yeah, thank you, Mayor. This is my last matter, matter in these uh, minutes, so I appreciate uh, your, the opportunity to raise them, if you can, uh, 8223. Um, and obviously, everybody will know that Royal Mail workers have been engaged in uh, industrial action now for months uh, to stop cuts, to stop job losses and for fair pay. And um, I've been speaking to quite a few Royal Mail workers, and uh, I was a bit shocked at what they told me, which is that as a result of the strike, um, Royal Mail has suspended uh, many, many, many trade union reps. Uh, these are workers who work at Royal Mail, but have been uh, the organisers of the strike. Who are they're the people who you go to if you've got a grievance? The people who will update you as to the latest in the negotiations, um, and they're often the people who are uh, you know organising the picket lines, welcoming people who are visiting the picket line, um, and hundreds of them have been victimised by Royal Mail management. Um, and I, and I think that this type of uh, bullying is completely unacceptable. Um, and these are our residents. Uh, Royal Mail is a uh, major institution that is uh, that many, many people uh, depend on. The disruption that happened as a result of strike because of management's refusal to, to treat its workforce properly uh, was not good for the district. We had many letters, that uh, crucial letters that weren't received in time, uh, and we had many a lot of disruption, including to the £600 energy payment rollout uh, because of uh, the intransigence uh, uh, of Royal Mail employers. Um, so I think we should, uh, I mean, sometimes bullying has to work in the dark. So uh, big companies like Royal Mail don't like it when councils actually contact them and say, listen, uh, we've been, we've heard from your workers um, that you've been harassing them. So I think I want to propose we, say, we um, write the Royal Mail uh, calling on them to end the victimisation, the suspension of trade union activists um, here uh, in Derry and across the north and indeed across the water uh, in retaliation for the strike. So we'll just say that the trees are right now. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Harkin and a seconder. Councillor Knight, thank you. The okay, proposal is there. Um, Philip has his concerns around the language again, and we'll have those conversations after if the proposal is passed. Um, Alderman Hussey, you wish to speak on the proposal? Uh, the, the motion arises out of uh, uh, an issue that I had arisen uh, with regard to job losses in Kesselderg and Straban. And we still haven't had a reply on that that I'm aware of. And you know, it, it exemplifies the exact type of attitude that Royal Mail have, uh, where they'll just ignore this, and I think that's totally wrong. And I, I agree with uh, Councillor Harkin. That issue has to be brought up because we cannot allow Royal Mail, no matter what size of a company they are, to ignore um, the issues that that are brought to us as councillors, uh, and then that we bring on to them. Thank you, Mayor. Okay, um, Councillor Boyle online. Councillor John Boyle, point of order. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Um, Mayor, I'm not entirely sure, but I would like to know, um, because I often hear from Councillor Harkin, and it's not that I disagree with any of the um, matters that he's, that he's bringing up here in relation to union activity, but I would like to know, and I would like to hear a declaration from Councillor Harkin, if he is in any way employed by any of the unions, 
um, because I think that that may well be pertinent. If he's not, that's fine. If he is, then that's, that, that's an important thing to know as well. Thank you, um, Councillor Boyle. Um, we do at the beginning of every meeting ask people um, in terms of declarations of interest, and it's up to each individual member to declare their interest. So I'm sure um, Councillor Harkin would declare any interest that he, that he has um, uh, when, they're that, well, when, when, they're, when they're relevant. Thank you, Councillor uh, 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 Boyle. Well, that's okay. Boyle, thank I'll you. I'm not having a two way okay. conversation with you. I will thank take you. that as recorded. Okay, thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you, thank you. Okay. Councillor Harkin, very quickly. Thank you, Mayor. I, I, look, I think that's a bizarre request. Um, I am a trade unionist. I'm not a, a CWU member. I don't work for Royal Mail. And I, I don't think that this is the best way to uh, be serious about addressing serious workplace victimization and uh, of workers who deliver mail to our council offices, that deliver mail to our houses, and that who are integral, I would say, to uh, you know the fabric of, of our city and district. Thank you, Councillor Harkin. Councillor Jackson? Yeah, very briefly, um, Mayor, just to say that we, we fully support the motion. Um, and just, just on a and a, and a related point, um, because we, we've we've had numerous motions and we've made um, we've made commitments um, to support and send our solidarity to the workers from a range of backgrounds, but particularly um, our real male workers. And, and news this week of the the talks um, between the unions and Royal Mail management um, collapsing has been disappointing. Um, but. What was even more frustrating is when you had Royal Mail exec executives um, threatening insolvency and and, and 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 putting the blame on workers, and that that's created a great deal of fear, anxiety amongst um, those employed in our city and district. And the, so, Royal Mail need the um, need the own up, need to accept the responsibility to those that they're employed. They need to be paid fairly um, and they need to start listening. And using these scare tactics aren't going to work. It's not going to make the workers um, back down from their demands and we'll, we stand full square beside them um, every step of the way. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Jackson. Councillor Minnie. Thank you, Chair, for letting me in, and uh, the SLP group will be supporting this motion. Um, fully concur with Councillor Jackson's remarks there about what was related this week and this, the seeming, seeming threat of some sort of legal tactic to try and persuade the workers to, you know, to cave in on their current um, their current um, process, and which was completely wrong and, uh, and completely without any merit. Um, it's clear that they have a a valuable contribution, what they do, and uh, Royal Mail aren't taking their role seriously as employers. They aren't engaging with the union, and they should be doing so straight away and force us. But thank you, Chair, for that, and we support it. Thank you, Councillor Minnie. Um, no further speakers, um, and I don't hear anybody speaking in opposition, and I know that we have previously backed um, motion, so I'm happy to say that that proposal has also passed, um, Councillor Harkin, and that is the end of your matters arising. Yep. Okay, Councillor Ferguson, Manager Raisin. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I have two Manager Raisin, but hopefully I'll go through them really quickly. Mayor, C74-23, Ryan McBride Football Stadium. Um, I have been contacted by some um, other teams that are struggling to get bookings when it comes to matches themselves, not necessarily practices. And they're saying the biggest issue is that the league that they're playing in, so like the follies and stuff, they need um, floodlights. They need floodlights within the pitch. Now, um, I know they've identified that there is floodlights around the um, Roman track at Templemore, but there isn't one inside the, the Swilly Stadium. So, Mayor, all I'm say thinking is it's obviously an issue. We know we could have twice as many football pitches and fill it capacity-wise, and we have so much demand. But I'm wondering at the next health and communities in the near term, maybe we could have a report at looking at possibilities of adapting even the floodlights within Templemore that, so that that 
I mean, the football pitch roof in Templemore would actually work. But it's just a report to kind of have a look at the stock that we have and how we could possibly improve on it. Um, and then, Mayor, do you want me to go on to the second? Or I'm, I'm, I'm just going to stop in and say, yeah, I think that that would probably be useful coming back to health and communities around the, the pitch strategy as well, because we're, we're often um, caught asked about our pitches and the facilities and availability, so that would be useful. Um, go ahead, next item. Yeah, and the second issue, Mayor, it's not very often we get um, the actually have something positive, which is C9323, the Nancy Sierra wrote a just um, roadmap. I just wanted to congratulate the team for the the call out that they got in the, the local press when it comes to the, um, sorry, let me bring it up to the UK wide report regarding climate change and the council being the first with its adaptation. And I think that goes to show that we have a fantastic team and in, in, in our department really pushing as many different things when it comes to resilience and climate change. And it's not just words. There's a lot of action and um, I was very impressed when I first was on the climate change um, working group about the video that is not just about climate change, but actually the climate change here within our own city and district. So just wanted to put it on record. Well done to the team and congratulations. Thank you, Councillor Ferguson. And yes, completely concur. When I heard that on the news yesterday, it was it was good news. Um, anyone else with matters arising? Councillor Neil. Uh, thank you, Mayor. It's uh, C823 uh, um, around the um, the responses uh, and about the, the motion that we uh, sent uh, around freezing the rents uh, for Housing Executive and Housing Associations uh, homes. Uh, and we're disappointed that the rent increases have gone ahead. Um, and we're also disappointed at the responses from the housing associations that did respond uh, following, following this uh, proposal uh, last month um, around uh, their rationale for having to increase uh, rents for uh, these uh, social housing units. Uh, and the difficulty is that there's a lot of people in social housing who are seriously struggling to pay their rent. I'm sure many people have been contacted by uh, many residents. Uh, one example is someone who moved into their house a year ago and this is the second time that their rent has been increased. Um, it's gone from £563 a month to £613 a month. Uh, and the thing for this person, like for many other people, they don't get any help towards paying their rent because they're working. Um, and and this is supposed to be affordable housing when people are, are renting from either the housing executive or housing associations. And the, the thing is, these the people running these organisations seem to be totally out of touch with those living in these uh, in these houses. And I think um, particularly in the response from the uh, chief executive of the NIHA, um, it's ironic that he pointed out that our council's uh, rate increase um, used that as a justification for them increasing their rates. Uh, and I think, you know, this the decision by our council to increase the rate has undermined our council's ability to actually challenge others who are putting in these um, price hikes. Um, so, you know, by us implementing Tory austerity um, at the council level, um, I think it's undermined the council's ability to call on others to avoid hikes and cuts. Uh, and it's only uh, implementing Tory austerity as uh, was voted in uh, by the main parties in this council. Um, has only prolonged uh, this crisis and made it worse. And it really has undermined our ability to call it out whenever it's happening. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Neil. Um, any further matters arising? Nope. Okay, thank you. Moving on to the reconvened meeting of Council. If I can get to it here. Yep. Um, could I get a proposer and so second? Thank you. Seconder, Councillor Tierney. Thank you. Any matters arising from that meeting? Councillor Donnelly. Good morning, Mr Chair. Chair, I have a matter of accuracy. Uh, uh, just, just a matter arising. It's regarding item C122 forward slash 23. It was about the attack in Homa. Chair, during my contribution to this, uh, it's mentioned Twice the word murder. I didn't use that term. If that could be amended, and also the point that I would like to, to make, Chair, is that 
since this, and, and people have the right to voice their opinion against violence, and that's justified. But, and this was a, an incident that happened outside our district. However, it's it's not, you know, it, 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 it isn't limited. But since that, Chair, there's been numerous attempts to, to end people's life and, and attacking property. And a lot of these have come from, uh, it's almost an intensification of gang war within within loyalist paramilitaries. There has been numerous pipe and petrol bomb attacks, uh, and and nobody in this council seen fit to, to mention that in, in any of the meetings since. We've also had the actual murder of a woman in Portadown, Alicia Nazarova, in the attempted murder of her 12-year-old daughter. And again, this council and, and, and councillors and older, older men, nobody saw fit the, the comment. And what that does, Chair, is that it, it reinforces the position from that many people believe that uh, violence against, you know, that there's a hierarchy of, of victims and, 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 and violence. And that, you know, and, and it's, it's different than not against the state, but if it's state violence or, or, or violence against women and girls or violence by the British state or its proxies, that it's, it's, uh, it's not as, somehow not as important. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Donnelly, Councillor Alderman Mark. Thank you, Mayor. It's in C132. Sorry, I thought you were on that. Um, Alderman Hussey, were you indicating on this? No. Okay. Go ahead. Oh, you were, sorry, Councillor Chief. Thank you, Mayor. I'll keep it very um, short. I and all the members of our group condemn all acts of violence, regardless of who um, carries them out, whether it's loyalists, Republicans, or private individuals. I have no um, qualms whatsoever in saying that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay. Um, Alderman Mark. Thank you. Thank you, Merson. C132 slash 23. Um, members, I was approached by a, a lady, Joel Robinson, who sadly lost a loved one recently, and and she's got two autistic young kids there. So um, Jill approached me and she heard the story about Matilda Handy. I'm not sure if a lot of you have heard that story. A young nine year old girl from Nottingham who lost her grandmother and she decided the she wanted something to send letters to her grandmother in heaven. So what she came, they came up was was the post box to heaven. Now this has been rolled out a lot of cemeteries and obviously for a lot of us, everyone in the district. We do go through grieving. It's very, very difficult for young people, young people out there. So it is, and this is a way of coping. Now, there has been a council now, Andrew and Yudin Irish, just brought that motion out there in early March, and I say it will be going around the district, but I think our council should take a lead there. We have, as far as I'm aware, 10 cemeteries out there, and what I'd like to do, Mayor, is put a proposal on the table on this well, one. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, and I really do take on board the proposal that you're going to make. It's not flowing from the minutes of the meeting. You're going on to a ceiling list. I would suggest that you bring that forward as a proper motion at the next proper... Well, contract. Mayor, I might not be here in the next... No, no. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> good. And I, I, think, I think it's yourself, Mayor. You know, um, no, I think it would be nice for this, I, this council to do it. Mark, Alderman Mark, I appreciate what you're saying. I appreciate if you let members decide that, Mayor. No. I'm sorry, I'm I'm rolling on it now, and I'm going to ask that you bring that back as a proper motion um, to the next council meeting. Um, it I'll see we're going to bring it on later. So properly from well, it's unfortunately a pop-up motion has happened here, Mayor, so and you haven't let this one. Thank you. Thank you. Any further matters arising from the minutes? No. Okay, I'm going to say it's quarter past four now, and we will take a break and come back at half past four.
past. No one find them again. Okay, um, so confirmation of the open minutes of the special meeting council held on Tuesday, the 21st of February. If I could get a proposer and seconder for accuracy. Um, Councillor McHugh, proposed, seconder. Thank you, Councillor McGinley. Any matters arising? Nope. Okay. Um, confirmation of the open minutes of the special meeting held on Monday, the 13th of March. If I could get a proposer and seconder for accuracy. There seems to be two mayors on the audio. Nobody wants that. <laughs> um, hopefully that can be sorted. Um, proposer and seconder for accuracy for the special minutes of proposed, um, Councillor Duffy. Um, seconded, um, Councillor Heaney. Thank you. Um, any matters to raise in? Um, Alderman Hussey. I wasn't sure there. Are we at the uh, Covenant? Oh, sorry. You didn't get time to say which one you were at there. I, wasn't okay, sure. I said the, the special meeting of the 13th of March. Okay, so no matter to raise. So moving on now to the monthly governance and strategic planning committee held on Tuesday the 7th of March. Proposer and seconder for accuracy, proposed Councillor Tierney, seconded Alderman Hussey. Um, and matters arising, um, Simon Alderman Hussey. No, thank you. GSP 55 bar 23, page 88, Coronation Events Funding. Uh, is there a verbal update on that? Thank you, Mayor. I'm happy to provide a verbal update. I said earlier in the meeting, myself and Ellen attend the meeting as, as requested from uh, the governance committee to look at how um, the council can support in kind um, the various events that are going to be uh, across that weekend across the city and district. So we had a very positive, long engagement with the uh, the members that were, that were there. So we've looked at areas such as bins and waste collection that we can assist on, uh, port to lose barriers, um, health and safety support in terms of event planning and to make sure the events are going to be safe marketing support, graphic design support that we can also uh, provide. There are a few other issues that I haven't had a chance to, to talk to the mayor about that I'll, I'll raise after the, the meeting today. Um, there was one request from Alderman Hussey, I believe, in terms of the, the TV screen there, where there was a, a, a fund available to hire a TV screen, and if that was available, Alderman Hussey requested that would be done in Castle Derg. Unfortunately, that has closed, so we're not able to apply to that fund. Um, other issues that, that in general, um, we would have had a, a long engagement um, in the past with the members of the Northwest Cultural uh, Forum. We said we, we undertook because of COVID, they kind of lapsed and those meetings had kind of fallen by the wayside. So uh, we undertook as officers that we would re-engage with that to address a, a number of other issues. But uh, overall, the, the forum are now to come back with a, a detailed list of the various events um, that have to happen and we will plug in where the in-kind support that we can provide as officers. Alderman Hussey. Uh, thank you, Mayor, and uh, thank you to uh, to Stephen and, and Ellen. Uh, I was in attendance at that meeting that they were at, uh, not as an elected member, but as a, representing another body uh, running events. Um, I think I have to say to all in the chamber, 
uh, that there is uh, a disillusionment uh, that I detected, and uh, I, I presume Alan and Stephen would have detected it as well, that uh, Council is ignoring or not paying enough attention to the needs of a, a major minority within within the community. And it's something that the Council has to take on board uh, and going forward. Uh, obviously, the nature of this particular event, Coronation, it, it sort of came mm -hmm. beyond the boundaries of Council funding, etc. But for example, the, the, uh, the big screen element, uh, I'm not sure what did that closed on, but I had brought it up at our last uh, governance meeting. Uh, you know, was it, was it after that meeting that, that it actually closed? Because if it was, you know, could an application maybe not have been put in? Um, and as I say, going forward, uh, I think councillors are going to have to raise their empathy level of the concerns uh, that do exist within the, particularly the PUL community going forward and events that pertain to that section of our wider community. Uh, I welcome uh, suggestions uh, going forward as to how Council can engage and can assist with various events. But uh, there's always that feeling within that section of the community. Surely to goodness more could have been done. But uh, I think perhaps the, the, the way forward is to look the way forward and consider in the future uh, all needs of all sections of every part of the community. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Alderman Hussey and um, Alderman Devaney on this. Thank you, Mayor, for uh, um, allowing me in. Uh, and I have to say thanks to Stephen and Ellen for that meeting. Um, I got an update from some of the groups that attended the meeting. I wasn't there myself, but they said, look, there was some productive work um, coming out, or some positive coming out. But there, just look, um, there is that concern from the PUL community, the wider PUL community, that, that, that uh, they're not getting enough support. But just, Stephen, I want to just go back in, uh, and uh, I think we had a discussion in around the screen issue. Uh, I was led to believe that there was a letter, I can't remember from who it was, but I was talk to you about it, um, came into each council allowing two or three thousand pounds to be allowed for a screen. And we talked about a screen because you quite clearly stated that if we were to purchase a screen, it would be 25,000. So that would have been totally out of the question. Uh, and I'm just thinking what I'm hearing out there uh, as mayor, that a screen can be hired for around a thousand pound. So, you know, uh, I know Stephen has said the fund has run out, but where did the information or who sent the letter in or what time did we get that letter as a council uh, um, regarding that funding for um, the higher screens or what might, um, might have come out of it? That's just what I want for some clarification, mayor. Thank you, um, Alderman Devaney. While well, we're finding that information, I have two further speakers. So, Councillor Harkin. Thank you, Mayor. Look, we, we appreciate that there's certainly going to be some people in our district uh, celebrating the coronation. Um, uh, we won't be as socialists, and we don't see this as a green and orange issue. We see this as an issue of class. And that's why we're concerned that uh, the Council may get bogged down in trying to figure out uh, how to take Council resources and time to, to, to celebrate a coronation. And I and I think that the issue for us is that this is one of the most elite, wealthiest organisations in the entire world. And we are in the middle of an unprecedented co cost of living crisis uh, that is literally putting so many people of all communities uh, here in our city and across the district through the ground in terms of hardship. And we are going to have a spectacle um, uh, come May 6th uh, of uh, wealth and um, uh, and I think that this is about, for us, this is about legitimising that, like making it normalising the idea that some are born in the privilege for no reason other than their birth line and are inherit castles, inherit billions and billions of pounds and inherit jewellery and uh, everybody else is supposed to be happy with their lot. And I, and I think the thing is, um, I know that there's a feeling out there that what happened during the, the, the mourning period following the death of um, 
the Queen when people were essentially told to, to, to you know, suck it up. And if you dissented at all, uh, you would be grabbed off the street by the police or you'd be shut down in BBC or you'd be, uh, you know, hushed. Uh, the people are not going to accept that this time round. Um, I think people view uh, Charles as someone very different. Uh, and Charles himself is over the last two decades uh, been very involved in profiteering. Uh, and that's what I think is going to make this particular coronation um, uh, from the point of view of us and them, and I mean in a class way, uh, far more, uh, you know, um, unacceptable. So look, uh, that is, uh, you know, this is, I think, for socialists here in Ireland, socialists across the world, they're going to have the same view on this, um, that, you know, this is an institution whose time uh, should have ended hundreds of years ago uh, when, when, it, when science came along to prove bloodlines were of no importance. Um, but that's our comment on it, Mayor. Thank you. Okay, Councillor Tierney. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I've heard the phrase before, don't ask a question unless you know the answer being used, but Alderman Hussey was at the meeting and then asked for an update, which was um, quite alarming. But however, um, we have no issue with the response from Stephen in relation to um, support and kind. Um, that the council will be providing. Um, I certainly won't be engaging in any of the coronation events, but I have no issue with anybody who does um, want to engage in them doing so, um, and the council supporting that. Um, if uh, that's what's agreed here today, I, I have no issue with that. I do, and I am sort of slightly alarmed at some of the other remarks that were made, particularly by Alderman Devaney and Alderman Hussey around the, the further support that these groups require, which may or may not be the truth. But as I understand it, Mayor, senior officers from this council meet with these groups um, on a regular basis. To the best of my knowledge, and we all knew that this coronation was coming up, no unionist elected representative, to the best of my knowledge, raised it within this council to see how council would mark this event or what support we would be offering to groups looking to mark this event. I've spoken to colleagues from councils across the north whenever we were going through the rich process, and some of those councils were actually making uh, allowances for the coronation based on where they were. Wasn't once mentioned there in Strabane, and then coming in and suggesting that we were lit to the party. We weren't. It wasn't raised. It wasn't an issue. It didn't become an issue, at the best of my understanding, until the groups that sent on the letter, which resulted in the meeting that Stephen and Ellen attended, which has resulted in the outcome that we have today. I don't think it's a good idea for us to be allowing that particular narrative to go out. This council offers services to people right across this district, regardless of what your religion is, and should do that if a particular section of the community requires council support, surely it's up to the representatives of that particular section of the community to lobby on their behalf to get that done. It's not okay to come on here and try to blame this council as a corporate body for events not being planned appropriately whenever the representatives of that particular community sat in their hands right through a, a very difficult budget process and didn't allow budget or funding to be attached to it doesn't even raise the conversation. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Donnelly. Good morning, good Chair. <clears throat> Chair, look, I, I, I had a conversation before this came to Council the last time. I had a conversation the day before with a member of, of these groups who made the application. I've had a uh, conversation since, both uh, online and face-to-face. -face. Uh, and th there is some frustrations, but I think the reality is, is that the unionist councillors here were they were asleep at the wheel. And for to come in here now and try and blame everybody else and try and say, you know, and use that argument, they, they undermine council's efforts. I've, I've seen PEL groups and minority unionist groups in, you know, council facilities and council have helped them on numerous occasions. Maybe they feel different. What we should do is maybe invite them in here and let's hear from them, because I'm just not sure how representative that the, the DUP in particular, uh, you know, their views is in line with, with some of these groups or even Alderman Hussey. 
Uh, it regards the coronation, my, my views, it's, it's, it's not acceptable to me. It's obscene. It, 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 it's an obscene spectacle. And, and you know, I, I, I don't think this council should have any input into that whatsoever. And, and that's fundamental for me. It's not, you know, some people may dress it up and say, oh, it's like a, a minority or, or British people, this and that. This is an institution that, that, that represents 800 years of oppression and ongoing the denial of democratic rights to, to the people of this island, and it cannot, it's fundamental for me, and it cannot be dressed up any, any other way. I think we invite the groups, we invite them in, we have the conversation, and if, there's a, if it's possible, you know, we had a similar issue not that long ago regarding the apprentice voice, and, and, and some councillors and other men here went and had a meeting, but, and forgive me, it could be there, but I don't see any feedback from that meeting or what way will that work if we could have some feedback uh, for our members and you know of what, what happened there and, um, and how we move forward. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Donnelly. Um, is there an update in terms of the questions posed by Alderman Devaney? Yeah. 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 Through you, Mayor, um, I would advise that the first we heard of the 45,000, and as I see, it's broken down into 35,000 for screenings of the coronation, and an additional 10,000 of funding uh, would be available to extend that screening to include the Eurovision Song Contest. Um, that came in through um, the from the Secretary of State, uh, dated late February, and those that particular letter uh, was included in the GSP. Um, um, document pack of the 7th of March. Now, the subsequent letter um, came in or was issued on the um, 10th of March, indicating a 17th of March um, funding deadline. Um, now, I suppose, as, as I say, in terms of GSP, the only recommendation coming out of uh, GSP was about the uh, meeting with the stakeholders. So um, there is no sort of further action taken in that context. Thank you. Okay, thank you for the update um, and the information. Um, so moving on, any further matters arising from governance? Um, Councillor Harkham. Yes, Mayor, uh, GSP 44 slash 23. And uh, <clears throat> as people may have seen, the strike by housing maintenance workers has uh, come to an end. A majority of workers uh, voted to accept the offer that was made to them this week. And um, I would say even the people who voted for it aren't fully happy with it. Um, they were in strike for, all, for seven months. It's one of the longest public sector strikes uh, we've ever had here in the north. I think that when Barry and Troy come in here, they gave a very good account of themselves and of their reasons for striking. Um, and I think that the workers were brilliant throughout, um, despite the way they were demonized at times, despite the way they were frustrated with the lack of support that they got. They never wavered. Uh, they never doubted their demands. Um, and the union backed them up uh, financially and, and uh, you know, organisationally from the beginning to the end. And I know for a fact that many of the workers, uh, even though they were desperate to get back out and work um, and do their jobs, um, were, would have stayed out in that picket line uh, a lot longer. Um, I think people are happy that, they're, that the strike is resolved. Um, I, I think that the workers uh, got a lot more than they would have got if they hadn't have struck, um, but they didn't get anywhere near enough what they deserve. And I think that uh, there's two things I think will be uh, ongoing issues uh, for housing executive uh, management, and that is one, that this strike never needed to happen because the demands that these workers were making were modest in the extreme based on their actual pay. Um, and they were out there for seven months. Um, and two, um, that uh, they, they, they didn't get what they wanted. And so um, I think now we have uh, a far stronger union at the housing executive. 
Um, look, I, we are champions, people before profit and others in this council are champions of the housing executive. We want it to be the main housing organisation uh, building houses here in the north. We want it to be able to build thousands of new homes that we desperately need. We want them to be able to renovate and we're going to continue to campaign to, to, to see them uh, to see that develop. Uh, but we also need and demand a housing executive that treats its workers with respect and dignity. And I think that uh, the management uh, that allowed the strike to prolong have serious questions to answer because it shouldn't have come to this. But look, we commend the workers. Uh, we're glad that they got more than they were initially offered. We're proud of what they did. And uh, we're glad that we were able to stand in solidarity with them and support them along the way. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Harkin. Councillor Gallagher, on this? No, oh, no, no our matter's right. Okay, go ahead. Thank you, Mayor. It's GSP 50 2023. I'm sorry, I'm I would uh, I would welcome the fact that, that as part of this, that uh, Council's endorsing and continuing to work with Donegal on the Riverine. It's a second, but just Mayor, there was give me some concerns, you know, around the Glendermont Valley Green proposal going forward uh, uh, under Peace Plus, and what would give me concern is is around SUPB and SUPB saying that Council will only take one project forward, and when you look at the previous round, that eight million pound was funded in this council area, but it was funded in the same local district, i.e. the Shared Village project, and council taking this forward in the same ward. It would give me concerns that they may say, just the same as we, we had discussions around levelling up, that they may reject this project on the grounds that they've already invested eight million euros in the same electrical ward. So I'm thinking that from a strategic point of view, that council may look across the full district to see if there would be the potential for a better project going forward. Because I think this one will get knocked back on the grounds of investment already had under the previous round. And I would ask this chamber to consider that before endorsing this report. And Sir Jackson? Yeah, um, I'm not. I'm not entirely sure if, if Councillor Gallagher is is on that committee. But the report was presented to the members, and and the recommendation for for the. For the develop or for an application that incorporates play facilities in Kareenir and facilities in Tolly Alley and Drumahoe, um, it was it was recommended on the basis that that all applications right across the the city and district were considered, and this was presented as the most likely to be successful. So it was the strongest application um, that met the criteria of SUPB. And it was presented as, with, as a recommendation to committee on that basis. So I'm not entirely sure if, if Councillor Gallagher has has more knowledge of the SEPB criteria than council officers do. But um, that that was information that we received at committee, and that was the, and the decision taken by committee was taken on that basis. Thank you, Mayor. Hey, on Councillor Gallagher, is there any one else with an opinion? Um, Councillor Mooney. Thanks, Chair. And <coughs> just to echo what Councillor Jackson has said, I spoke on this item at the GSP committee, and uh, certainly that's the, the, the flavour I can see from the paper and the presentation. And uh, I don't see um, why Council would, demu would demure from that decision. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Mooney. Um, no further speakers. I'll let you back in very briefly, Councillor Gallagher. Thank you, Chair. Like I'm, I'm not, I'm not surprised that the councillors that spoke uh, come from that uh, electoral ward. But I, and I do have a good experience of twenty years' experience of work on my SUBB. So I'll, I'll put that on the record. Like, and what I'm saying is that I believe that SUBB, when they look at this project. 
will consider heavily that they've already invested eight million euros and that they will consider that they have said to council we're only supporting one project from your entire district that's got it and we've already invested eight million euros in one ward i think that they will come back and say no and uh we will see if this goes forward we will see and if we get not back I'd be writing, whether I'm in council or not, I'd be writing back saying this is not very strategic because we can change it. The side of a decision come back to knock it back, we won't. And we have seen that with the Riverine project. We have. So I, I rest my case. I've raised it and I think that should be given to consideration. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Gallagher. Um, I don't see any further appetite to discuss it or to change it. So, um, any further matters arising from GSP? Nope. Okay, um, moving on to the monthly planning committee held on Wednesday the 8th of March, a proposer and seconder proposed um, and seconded Councillor Money. Thank you. Um, any matters arising from planning? Nope. Okay, moving on to the monthly business and culture committee held on Tuesday the 14th of March. If I could get a proposer Thank you. And uh, seconder, Councillor Heaney, I'll thank you. Um, any matters arising from business and culture? Excellent. Uh, sorry. Oh, sorry, Stephen. Okay, sorry, there was an item that was deferred, um, the buyer system at Canal Bays and Care Parks, Durban. Um, Stephen, do you wish to say a few words on it? Thank you, Mayor. If I could just come in there, the, the, the committee uh, members had asked to defer this to full council, um, just to give time for the uh, Strabane Town Centre Manager to consult with the, the residents that backed onto there, not just the businesses, which were requests from uh, the floor from the members. Um, so that has been done. Um, uh, the, the manager went around the, the various uh, residents um, uh, personally. Two residents were in and they expressed that they were very positive, very supportive of the businesses. The rest of the residents uh, who weren't at home were left um, information and asked to consult or to, to contact um, the bid manager if, if they had any concerns, which they didn't do. So from that, we, we are taking it that the residents are broadly in agreement or happy at least to progress. And as we said at committee, this is a, a pilot to see. The barriers are not being removed. If anti-social behaviour returns, then of course we would we would re-engage and close the barriers. But this is as a request of businesses and a number of businesses have asked us to consider this. So um, it was just to bring that information back and hopefully that, that uh, is, uh, members are happy with that explanation. Thank you, Stephen. And I do have three speakers on it. Um, so, Councillor Michaela Boyd. Mayor, yeah, thank you for letting me in. Uh, thanks, Stephen, for that. Um, just first of all, I want to put on uh, the record my thanks to the bid manager, Emma, uh, for her work on this. And uh, she did take the time out to go around the properties um, that are uh, backing on and facing on to, to the uh, canal. Uh, based in Car Park, um, and thanks that she took on board the issues that I had raised with her personally. Um, obviously, the, the, this issue has, has been a long-standing issue, as, as people would know from the area. Um, there, years gone past, there was a bit of antisocial behaviour down there, and um, young ones dipping cars and doing donuts and that sort of thing. But um, there was a pilot scheme at Christmas, and I know there's been no um, reports of any um, antisocial behaviour there since 
than fat. So that's all good. And uh, just to put on record, I do support the businesses. Um, you know, we've come out of COVID and businesses are struggling. They find it very difficult, uh, particularly the businesses down and around the canal basin. Um, so we'd be happy to, to um, go with a recommendation today. Um, and um, I'm satisfied as well that the the people that live close by that did report to us the antisocial behaviour that they are content to have the barriers opened. But um, if if any of the antisocial behaviour or the car, uh, it was mainly the cars dipping and donutting that were creating the noise that affected the, the homes close by. That if that were to um, happen again, that the barriers would be closed. But I think the general um, I suppose the general consensus of the air, the people in the area um, was that we would be supporting the traders. So um, again, want to put on my record my thanks to, to Emma um, or parties. Thanks for the work that she's done on this to the um, to date. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, um, Councillor Boyd. So are you content to um, propose the original recommendation? Yes, I am, Mayor. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, Alderman Hussey? Uh, separate item. Councillor Barr? Happy to second that proposal and uh, just on behalf of the SDLP to thank Emma and her team for carrying out that survey with the residents. It was very important that they were uh, um, included within this and their views were heard, so uh, we're content uh, to go, go ahead with uh, remaining open. Thank you. Um, Alderman Devaney on this? Yeah. Yep, Mayor, on this issue and happy to proceed with the recommendation on this. I think it was important that we reached out to those residents who would live closest and would like to put on record uh, um, our thanks again to Emma from Bent for going out and having the discussion and round. But as some of the previous speakers said, uh, um, it was an issue and around donutting and cars uh, uh, and around the, the area. And if that was to happen again, Mayor, we would have to relook at the issue and close the barriers again, but happy to support the recommendation. Thank you, Alderman Devaney. Okay, so that's proposed and seconded, so intend to move on. Alderman Hussey, is it matters arising from business? Matters arising. Yeah, go yeah. ahead. Uh, BC 46 car park resurfacing. Uh, is there a timeline on, on that particular item? And secondly, with regard to Albert Street car park, in Castle Derg, are there any plans within the resurfacing uh, that there will be a reconfiguration uh, to make better use of the space in that area? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, thank you. Um, so the timeline is now, it's we're planning to have all the works for the four, those four car parks finished for June. Um, so that's the, the plan. I don't have an update on the, the tender because the officer is, is directly doing is, is currently off, unfortunately, he's a, a death in the family. But, um, I'll get an exact update for that, but we're still on target for everyone to be finished in the June. And yes, there is a reconfiguration of all the car parks to make better use of space, family friendly spaces, more disabled spaces, etc. I yeah, appreciate it, Mayor. Thank you. Okay, um, moving on to uh, monthly environment regeneration held on Wednesday, the 15th of March. If I could get a proposal. Proposal, Alderman Seconder. Councillor Neil, thank you. Any matters arising from environment regeneration? Councillor Neil. No. Um, thanks, Mayor. And it's just the ER seven nine um slash twenty-three. Um so um just to echo Councillor Ferguson's congratulations um uh, to the council on the award for its climate change adaptation plan. I know that there's been really good work uh, that's gone on date, um, and it'll be great to see it's out working some things now. Um, but I suppose um, just the the point to make um, is that this this plan will be meaningless if we're not actively showing how this plan is being put into practice in all aspects of how we conduct council business. So you know, obviously the net zero funding application is a really really good example of how the climate 
climate adaptation plan is being put under practice. Uh, but then there's other um, things that, you know, decisions that we're making that actually have a negative impact. Uh, and I'd asked previously around um, an update on, you know, the data centres that uh, have been granted approval by Council. So it's just to see if there was an update on that. Uh, and then just a point on, uh, like, one of the planning decisions that uh, was recently discussed. Um, I can't bring it up because it's it's not within the, the minutes um, of that. Uh, but it was just with regards to the, the major proposal for the service station in Laurie Park of the new Les McCarl roundabout on the A6 outside Drumahoe, um, which was discussed on Monday. And I, I think the key point around that is, um, you know, the, within the key documents in that, none of them mention climate, despite our council having a commitment to uh, climate screen um, all decisions. Uh, and, you know, with this um, proposal, um, it, it uh, suggests that there'll be three to four million vehicle movements um, a year uh, as a result of the development. Uh, and that's in addition to the park and ride that, in that area. And there's a Larry Park as well, which I understand doesn't have planning permission. Um, and I understand, you know, with regard to this uh, proposal, the habitat uh, regulation assessment wasn't on the planning portal. And with that assessment, that actually does uh, have a, a climate um, assessment within it, um, because the implications of this from a climate point of view, obviously our adaptation plan commits to moving away from individual car use, from fossil fuel use. Um, but the implications from this have an impact on the residents of Drumahoe. They have an impact on the nitrogen levels of the Fahan, where uh, the people across the city get our drinking water. Um, so just a question um, on this around the habitat regulation assessment for officers is, is that something that is routinely put on the planning portal uh, for, for all decisions when it's been assessed and when it's made available? Um, because it's my understanding that it's supposed to be as per the Our House Convention. Thank you. I'll be content to take that. Yeah. Um, so there's, the, the, it's not a statutory obligation uh, for HRAs to go onto the planning portal, but the council does tend to do it. Um, this particular application that you're referring to, it wasn't done as a result of an oversight on that occasion. That was rectified as soon as it was brought to council's attention. Thank you. Um, Councillor McKay, Manager Rising. Well, uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, ER 71 slash 23, I um, suppose it's a, a tenuous enough link, but I, I, I trawled through the, the minutes and uh, it's the, the best uh, suited um, where to bring this up. But um, I myself and indeed uh, our local constituency office in Stavan has been lobbied by uh, employees of uh, the ground maintenance uh, team. Um, there's a perception um, well or real or not, the perception's there, but uh, since the cost savings exercise have been put in place that uh, they believe that they're being treated unfairly um, in relation to dairy-based employees. And what I'm referring to is in terms of the, the nature of work that's been delegated to them. Um, there, there is a sense of disparity there. Um, I have issue, or I have outlined my concerns in an email to council officers, um, but it was requested that it be raised here at council today. Um, so I just want to put that on record, uh, Mayor. And I suppose just to seek assurance from council officers that uh, this disparity or perceived disparity um, will be addressed and that measures be taken to consult employees and their unions to ensure that uh, this is not the case and indeed that their views would be taken in, into consideration um, with regard to any changes to work schedules and the next going forward. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor McKay. Yeah. Yeah, through you, Chair uh, members, yes, uh, Councillor McKay brought this to my attention yesterday evening um, and I spoke to the Head of Environment this morning. Neither he or I had had any contact from any members of staff or indeed any unions in relation to that. That would be the normal process and the normal procedure. Um, so uh, I also contacted our, our Head of Human Resources and we will engage with uh, the unions and indeed the relevant um, teams in order to try and find out what's happening and to make sure that um, we address any concerns that have been raised. Thank you, Chair. Just on that point, do you mind if I come in? Yeah. 
So just to reassure members, as members know, we have uh, a very constructive and positive um, relationship with our joint trade unions and the council. Um, and we regularly meet with the trade unions to assess any issues um, with any employee or any group of employees across the organisation. We met very swiftly with the joint trade unions um, in respect of the proposed service cuts that can through from the uh, rates estimates process to outline to them all of the cuts and to assure them that as we go forward implementing any of those cuts that we would seek to engage fully um, with respect to that. So I, I do want to be very clear that if there's any perception whatsoever within any section of our workforce that there's been differential treatment, that that is not something we as a senior team endorse. It's not something we as a senior team uh, set out to, uh, to, to do. And we treat it very seriously. So we will, of course, look into those allegations and we will make sure that people are communicated with and that the unions are brought forward as we do with everything with regard to potential changes to um, terms and conditions. Thank you, Chief Executive. Um, Councillor Mooney. Thank you, Chair. Um, ER 77, um, 23, the flooding update. Um, I know my colleague, Councillor Reilly, um, spoke on this at the committee, but since this, this, this is the last meeting before PERDA, I was wondering, would officers have any update from DFA in relation to that, given the obvious concerns that residents have? Uh, especially around the trauma hole sort of alleviation scheme. Thank you. Yeah, through you, Chair. Members, we've had no further contact from DFI, um, and indeed um, we will, as we have done before, ensure that we send uh, the minutes on to the relevant um, teams, etc. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Councillor Harkin. Yeah, Mayor, thank you. ER 64 slash 23, this is in regard to uh, the withdrawal of uh, zero waste, uh, zero waste Northwest endorsement of the council. And look, my colleague, Councillor O'Neill, has uh, raised this extensively. I think at the committee level, but we're at the full council meeting, meeting, and I think it's important we acknowledge that this is a, a disaster for the council. Um, this is a council that took great pride in having a uh, climate action pledge, and uh, took great pride in being, uh, uh, you know, working with Zero Waste Northwest and, and having a plan to roll out uh, and move forward a zero waste economy. And for them to withdraw their collaboration with the council out of frustration and lack of progress, I think is uh, absolutely shameful for us. Um, I, I think it undermines our commitment to uh, radical and urgent climate change as our climate pledge lays out. Um, and I think that this uh, this is no small matter. And I think that this is uh, unfortunately going to have consequences for all our organisations and campaigns um, that align themselves with council. I've actually held, heard it come up from all, all our organisations as well, that they hope that um, uh, the, the, it doesn't end up in a situation uh, similar as the one with uh, Zero Waste Northwest. This has got a lot of media coverage. A lot of people are talking about it, especially people who care about climate and environmental um, uh, issues. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Harkin. And I see the Director has advised that officers will provide a report outlining the progress um, on the Zero Waste Circular Economy strategy to the next meeting. Okay, um, no further matters arising from ENR. Um, moving on to the monthly meeting of Health and Communities. If I could get a proposer and seconder. Proposed, Councillor McGinley, seconded, Councillor Tierney. Matters arising. Mayor, can I just um, yes, yes, an issue, yes. please? Um, members, it's simply to advise you that we have had some recent correspondence from the Permanent Secretary of the Department for Communities, and it's in relation to the annual allocation of grant um, towards community um, development and voluntary services, including advice that we receive. Um, it simply reflects um, the Department's um, uncertainty at the level of allocation they will receive from the block grant for 23-24. 
um, informs us that, that subject um, to um, the outcome of discussions um, in relation to their grant, they are only in a position to offer us a three-month um, grant allocation on a pro rata basis, which will be based on 22-23's um, figures, um, and that at this point they can, that, that allocation cannot be interpreted as the assurance as to the level of funding available for the remainder of 23-24. Uh, so in the absence of the budget, budget statement um, settlement for the department, um, it will likely be a number of weeks before the department have a confirmed allocation and subsequently advise us. Um, so to say to members that in terms of advice services um, at HC5523, um, where we agreed uh, to provide a three-month letter of offer, we would continue to do that. Um, in terms of HC5623, uh, community support funding and GR funding, we would review those grant allocations. Um, if they support, say, for example, community centre venue funds, um, then we would go ahead to release those. In terms of other general grants, um, where it wouldn't be appropriate to give a pro rata award because simply the group couldn't achieve its objectives and deliver on the outcomes of its programme, we would pause those. Um, until we would receive the confirmation um, of actual budget subject to the outcome of, of that. Um, if there were any amendments required, we would bring back a further updated report um, to the June uh, meeting. In relation to the um, overall good relations funding, as you know, members, we've submitted the three-year strategy as outlined at HC 6523. Um, we have been advised at a program level um, that um, any good relations activity that continues post the 1st of April would be at Council's risk. So we are quantifying that level of risk at this point in time and we're seeking um, to escalate um, that conversation within the Executive Office um, to see if we can receive similar assurances to that from um, DFC. So members, just uh, I felt it, we're obliged to bring that information to your attention today. And apologies, we didn't have the course Correspondence um, when the papers and documents for this meeting were released. Thank you, Karen, for that. And as a good party colleague of mine would say, have you any good news? Um, Councillor Doyle. Thanks, Mayor. Thanks, Karen. Um, I know you've only just recently got that correspondence, but um, can we get in contact with the affected groups very quickly? Because I know that um, you know I'm involved with some of them, and it uh, you know. And I'm sure this is right across the board. People are really relying on, particularly the the GR uh, money. So if we could, you know, within the next couple of days, get in contact with them and let them know where we're standing, and um, if we could all have have a copy of that corresponds as well. Thanks. Um, no further speakers on that. Um, thank you for the update, Karen. Any further matters arising from helping communities? No. Oh, sorry, concern I didn't see. Uh, that's all right. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Mayor. Um, it's just on HC HC six zero twenty three um, around the affordable warrant scheme. Um, and just in, in relation to that, uh, I just want to welcome um, officers' uh, placement of the air quality monitor in Bull Park. Um, you know, which I think is is a really important um, step to actually monitoring the air quality in that area that has a lot of issues with PM 2.5 and PM 10 levels exceeding the World Health Organization uh, limits. And, um, you know, there's been some preliminary data which correlates with the uh, regional air quality data that's showing um, how it's related to affordable want is um, higher levels of uh, PM 2.5 and PM 10 in the evening, which is no surprise because that's what all the regional data is saying. Um, but I just think it, it further uh, emphasises the point that was made within that discussion around the proper retrofitting of homes because a third of the energy that we put under our homes is lost because of per insulation. Uh, and it's incredibly important, not just for uh, energy efficiency for saving money, uh, but it's also important for our air quality, um, which impacts the respiratory health and cardiovascular health of, of people in the city and district, which is really, really, really poor um, when we're when we're looking at the overall health statistics for here. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Neil. Um, no further matters arising. Um, moving on to health and community. No, sorry. Moving on to assurance audit and risk. Um, can I get a proposer and seconder? Proposed, Councillor McKinney. Um, seconded, Councillor Doyle. Um, any matters arising from audit? No. 
Okay. Thank you. Moving on to the special meeting of Health and Community Committee held on Tuesday the 21st. It says in mind to follow the see if they're in the pack here. Um, could I get a proposer and seconder for the minutes? Um, Councillor Ferguson, seconder, Councillor McGinley. And matters arising. Okay, thank you. That concludes the minutes of our open meetings. We sorry, you had a matter arising. It, it, it's not a matter arising. It's just a general issue. Reference the minutes and discussions that we've had. And I, I want to read an, uh, an item from the Dairy Journal last March, uh, twenty twenty-two. Opportunities available to engage with the Queen's Platinum Jubilee celebrations field. Sorry, to receive sorry, endorsement sorry, sorry, Alderman Hussey, there's no provision for this at this point. Hmm. I'm, 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 we have done the minutes of the meeting. There was no matters arising. There's no provision for you to read an extract of the Daily Journal. I'm sure everyone here has at some point had an opportunity to read articles in the Daily Journal. So I'm going to move on because we have two further um, items for discussion. And I, I, I was, mere, mere, and I I was to, merely go going to move on to the scheme of alliance. I was merely going to welcome that such applications will now have a fair hearing in this council. Thank you. Excellent. So scheme of alliances. So I'm, who's taking you, Ellen? I'm going to ask Ellen to take us through the scheme of alliance. Um, through you, Mary, this item was deferred from the Governance and Strategic Planning Committee. And basically, the item set out details of the new consolidated councillor allowance circular, which has been issued by the Department for Communities, and also has sought approval for an updated scheme of allowances based on uh, that uh, circular issued by uh, the Department for Communities. So the recommendation that was presented at the GSP meeting was that subject to members' comments, the updated scheme of allowance uh, was adopted. Um, I'll just hand it over to members. Thank you. OK, I have a couple of members who have indicated, so I'm going to go to the first, that is Councillor Tierney. Thank you, Mayor, and thanks to Ellen um, for, for the report. Um, we've given a lot of thought and, and consideration um, since the committee um, until today um, from what was raised by members at the committee, both one way and another. You know, I, I understand people's concerns, and Alderman Hussey at the committee talked about, you know, if you were lucky enough to do a, a 40 hour week and you were to break it down, um, it's less than, than, than minimum wage. All our, councillors talked about the fact that this pay uplift for councillors may cost them more than they actually gain um, because of their own individual circumstances. And it's because of members' own individual circumstances, Mayor, that I think this is a very difficult subject um, for councillors to be taking. I think it's, and I said it at the committee, it's very much Turkey's voting for Christmas um, in this report. And that's not because of the way the officers have presented it. It's because of the way DFC have uh, informed it. I think it's completely inappropriate for councillors to be sitting here making a decision based on their own pay salary. Um, I don't think it's fair. Um, and I don't think it's it's right at all. We have had a long discussion about it, and we feel that this should be deferred and put back to DFC to use a similar process, which is used and adopted by elected representatives in other forums, such as the Assembly and at Westminster. We should not be sitting here deciding on our own pay. I don't think it's right. Therefore, Mayor, I have a proposal which I have already sent the, the, the committee section, um, and if that can be put on the screen. The proposal starts by saying it's the collective view. I may have been presumptuous by, by, by putting that in, and that may need to be um, removed. It may not be the collective view. I hope it is, because I hope people see and understand the inappropriateness of us making this decision. I fully appreciate that people feel that they deserve and need this pay increase. I'm not. We are not suggesting that you're not entitled to it or you don't deserve it. What we're saying is you shouldn't be making the decision on it. I spoke earlier in this meeting and I said about a nurse in Derry 
been worth the same as a nurse, nurse in Manchester, Glasgow or Cardiff. And councillor in Darien Strabane, in my opinion, is worth the same as a councillor in Belfast, Newton Abbey or anywhere else across the north. Where we think it's inappropriate is that we are making this decision and we shouldn't be doing it. For that reason, Mayor, I have tabled the, that proposal um, and I hope the, the floor understands where we're coming from um, and can support it. Thank you. Thank you. Have you a seconder? Councillor Barr. Um, Councillor Doyle, happy to speak on the proposal? Uh, yes, Mayor. Um, I agree in principle with what the previous speaker has said. I don't believe that we should be setting our own pay, but the issue is in front of us. Um, and when we take uh, Councillor Tierney's uh, a, a motion, I would like to uh, propose that we uh, don't accept 5.1. Uh, because at the end of the day, we are in a cost of living crisis um, and it would be unbelievably shameful for uh, us, I believe, uh, to take a pay raise, um, regardless of, of the work we do. Because at the end of the day, yes, there are people out there who are doing much more difficult work than we are, uh, who are fighting for a pay raise. Um, I wouldn't speak on, would dare to speak on behalf of other members. Um, but when it comes to the work that, that we do, and whilst it is important, it isn't comparable to some of the other public sector uh, out there. Uh, so I certainly wouldn't be comfortable um, approving this. I also don't think that we should be deferring it. We should be discussing it and voting on it now. Uh, and when we get to that point, Mayor, um, if we could have a recorded vote, I'd appreciate that as well. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Hussey. Uh, thank you, Mayor, and uh, I'm inclined to agree with uh, Councillor Turney. Uh, this isn't something that should be coming to us in the Chamber. We should be the same as Assembly members, members of Parliament, whatever. An independent pay review body uh, determines what the appropriate remuneration is for one's work. The major issue in the department's thinking is under 4.3. Uh, no, sorry, it's not 4.3. It's, it's in there anyway, whereby the department declares a maximum allowance that would be payable. Uh, the simple removal of that word maximum uh, would mean that it is, uh, th there's no d uh, debate on it. Um, and indeed, the alliance that is put forward here has been determined by an independent peer review. Uh, so it's the word maximum which presents the difficulty in any council chamber. So putting it back to the department, I believe, at this moment in time, is the correct way to go. Uh, and I will, uh, it has been seconded, I will be supporting and uh, I think my party colleagues will be supporting Councillor Attorney's uh, proposal. Thank you, Councillor Jackson. Well, thanks, Mayor. And I suppose they start off, I, I, we can understand why um, Councillor Tierney made the comments in, in the first instance around it being a collective view of elected reps, but that, that it is inappropriate for us to take this decision because that's reflective of the discussion that took place at committee. Um, I don't think there was anybody that believed that it's right that the councillors should be taking a decision on their own salary or their own uh, their own allowances. So, and 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 the point was well made that that we're back in workers right across society, and um, and none of those workers have are afforded the luxury of deciding their own pay, and it's it's not right that we should be either. So. Um, I can understand that, and I, I can concur with, with um, Councillor Doyle's comments around um, the willingness they they reject this. Um, but in terms of the the, the proposal, and and we would we would be open. That was our view at committee that that we we, we wouldn't be um, accepting this um, out of principle. But I think the, the proposal that's in front of us is asking for that independent review um, and they write 
So we wouldn't be content to support um, awarding any any pay increase out of principle um, on that basis. We're content to support the, the the motion that's in front of us now, and and you know, pending the outcome of that independent review, you no, know, we we do sort of we 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 can await the outcome of that to see to, to see what sort of decisions or if it is appropriate for councillors at, at that stage if, to see what the EFC can back with before we take a further decision on it. But for the here and now, um, we're supportive of the the motion. Thanks, Mayor. Thank you. Um, Alderman Devaney. Thank you, Mayor, for uh, um, allowing me in. Uh, and as I read the, the, the proposal coming forward here, um, our party have no problem in supporting this proposal going forward. It's always a difficult issue when it comes to an increase uh, in salary for um, public representatives uh, on council. But I do take on board Councillor Tierney's issue and around that, that there are independent bodies look at salaries for the assembly and it comes in uh, and look the, there's not a discussion in around but madam mayor um and around the discussion that took place uh, and around this committee i did raise the issue you have quite a number of councillor you have a number of councillors there who are dependent only on council salary there are others uh, um look uh, and i'm not lobbying them um could have two jobs they have do two jobs uh, and i'm not lobbying them for that and best of luck to them but, you know, at the end of the day, um, we, when this was discussed and around the issue of, you know, accepting the council salary, I mean, council officers clearly came back and said it was up to everybody's individual choice. Uh, and sometimes it was up to somebody's individual circumstances, whether they chose to accept any part of the salary or part of the salary or any increase. And this is where uh, uh, the issue arises in here. You know, we talk about the cost of living uh, and around, um, we've heard it from our health service, uh, our teachers uh, and many others um, across the board. And we're fighting for an increase for them. And Madam Mayor, you know, for those councillors that are only receiving, their only salary is um, uh, the, the council uh, um, salary uh, money that they get. The cost of living crisis is hitting them as well, and you know, uh, as quite rightly said before, it's a way before below the cost of living crisis or the average salary that a person should be earning. Uh, and look, but in light of what's uh, the proposal here, we are very, very happy to uh, um, support this. But bear in mind, um, others have the choice of either accepting the salary or taking part of the salary. Or are, are, are leaving at that and because of different different circumstances whether it's benefits or tax brackets or whatever it may be but look we're happy to support this proposal thank you alderman devaney councillor ferguson thank you mayor and I, I won't prolong it but we'll, we're happy to support the proposal i think uh, councillor journey said it, it's turkey's vote for christmas it it's unfair it doesn't you know, it doesn't matter whether there was a cost of living crisis or not. It wouldn't look good for elected reps to be voting on their own per their own money that's coming in. So, um, Mayor, the, a lot of the reports you can see, if if this was someone else, you would you would have the discussion about it being a minimum wage. You, every single councillor has a different situation. They have a different um, lifestyle, family, jobs, not jobs, care responsibilities. Each person is is different and they're all impacted by the cost of living. I am uncomfortable about the, the back pay on this one, um, the, the fact that it goes back to 2022. I don't think we as councillors should have any part in, in voting on, on what we get paid in, in our roles. Um, so we're happy to defer it and, and put it back to DFC. I think there is bodies out there in which are able to provide guidance on this um, because no matter what, Mayor, a councillor voting for an increase in their wage is never going to go down well and, and never going to be a comfortable position to be in. So we're happy to support that. Thank you, Councillor Ferguson. Um, Councillor Harkin. Thank you, Mayor. Look, we're not we're not on the committee, so we were planning to get our position on record here today. Um, we don't think that this is something that should be kicked down the road or deferred. Um, uh, there there are health and social care workers going on strike again this week, and they have lost money already because they've been forced out on strike. 
Um, we've just had the conclusion of a seven-month strike by housing executive workers who are low-paid, um, who didn't get all that they wanted. Uh, we have the prospect now of road service workers going on strike. We have uh, the, all the workers who are in the civil service. All our civil servants are threatening to go on strike uh, this week. Um, and I'm, we're not going to sit here and vote ourselves a pay increase uh, for sitting uh, for you know uh, uh, while others have to stand on picket lines, and that applies to being on a committee or anything else. Um, so what what, uh, what the message from us, and I think the message from the council should be that we're uh, we're not going to vote uh, in favour. And we reject the uh, the financial offers that the department is coming at with us, uh, coming to us with. Um, and I think we should be sending that message very, very clearly today. There's a basic injustice here about uh, whether it's MPs, MLAs, uh, councillors getting automatic pay raises um, when others are forced out on the picket line and have to suffer to get them. And even when they're suffering, they're not getting anywhere near uh, what they are, are owed. Um, look, I, I, I knew what the uh, payment was going to be for a councillor when I uh, applied. It is not a lot of money, let's be honest. And work, councillors work far harder than what they are paid. Um, and uh, in, in a different world, it would be different. Uh, but there is a there is a basic solidarity that I think we have to have right now. Um, and I think you know, um, I, I, I can't. We can't justify, and we, we would prefer to vote on this today uh, to send that message publicly that we're not in favour of voting ourselves a pay increase when others have to fight for it. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, um, Councillor Gallagher. Councillor Dolly for Thank you, Mayor. For then some, uh, uh, and I'm looking at the proposal is probably uh, uh, the fairest way of, of trying to deal with this. I think that, uh, and I was a councillor in the previous term, and uh, when this came in, it was just a matter of uh, for your information, and, and then it's changed somewhere around to voting, and and the report it actually says adopt. But some others have made a decision. The issue around pay raises, like we're not sitting here saying we we'll give ourselves two percent, or we we'll give ourselves five percent, or we we'll give ourselves twenty percent. That's not a decision that was within our gift. This is coming from somewhere else. Uh, what I've got, and what gives me grief concern, was that when people were. Previously, Megan, that's the main political, uh, what would you would call it, like uh, ammunition out of this, and look how great we are, and blah, blah, blah. And, and then I've got the position going, oops, look where we are now. Uh, I don't want to be seen to be either voting for a pay raise. I don't see this as a pay raise, but that's, that's a different matter. But what I think is, and I have been, I. Uh, uh, community activist for 20 years and in that time I have seen numerous invest in Northern Ireland people coming down to Strapan and they've come down to Derry and then I've researched them what they do in Belfast and I've seen and when we look at today and we can go into Nizra and we can look at the facts that for any worker, any worker that's in the so called Northwest Terry Strabane, that their pay is £120 shorter, less than in the east of this six counties. That's a fact. I didn't make it up. Any councillor can go in, look at Nizra, and can see Mr. it. Mr. See the point I'm making is we shouldn't be voting to reinforce what Invest and I are doing in this district around. See when you see announcements of jobs, you will see 200 jobs, 50 for Belfast, 50 grand. You'll see 40 for Derry, 25 grand, and then you'll see Strabane. Of grand, and you see it dipped up there. We shouldn't be supporting Councilor that. Gallagher, you're now on three minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. 
Um, no further speakers on the proposal. It's been proposed and seconded, and there Mayor, has been a request. For... Can I raise a point of information, just please? Sorry? Can I raise a point of information for, for members? Very briefly. Very briefly. I've spoken to, just to the city solicitor there, and um, it was sentiment I think it's important members know that if, if this passes, then we can't then go and, and do 5.1 and reject it entirely. I was aware of that. Um, but you have asked for a recorded vote. Um, so I'll ask the Chief Executive to take us through the recorded vote. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Alderman Breslin. Alderman Devaney. For. Alderman Guy. For. Alderman Hussey. For. Alderman Carrigan. For. Alderman McCready. For. Alderman McMorris. For, John. Alderman Thompson. Alderman Wark. Councillor Jason Barr. For. Councillor Raymond Barr. Councillor John Boyle. For. Councillor Michaela Boyle. For John. Councillor Carr. Councillor Cusick. For. Councillor Dobbins. For John. Councillor Donnelly. Councillor Doyle. Abstain. Councillor Alex Duffy. Councillor Sandra Duffy. For. Councillor Edwards. For. Councillor Farrell. For. Councillor Ferguson. For. Councillor Gallagher. Councillor Harkin. Councillor Heaney. For. Councillor Jackson. For. Councillor Kelly. For. Councillor Logue. For. Councillor McGinley. Councillor McGowan. For. Councillor McKee. Councillor McKinney. For. Councillor Mooney. Councillor O'Neill. Councillor Riley. For John. Um, is Councillor Sinari Barr here with us? No. Nope. Councillor Tierney. For. Thank you. Mayor, I have recorded 28 for, no one against, and seven abstentions, so the motion passes. Okay, okay um, thank you for that. Moving on to the City Baths update. Please do me. Um, I think members, um, Barry has conversed with um, the head of strategic capital and finance and Alfie is going to take through the port. Yeah, thanks, uh, Mayor. Members, the report is the update to you on the refurbishment works being undertaken at the City Baths. Um, this is further to the report presented at this month's Health and Community Committee and to seek your approval for increasing the project contingency sum and budget. Um, you'll be aware that previously we approved a sum of 1.028 million for this project, um, 839k in relation to the appointment of the contractor, and 105 in relation to a contingency sum um, allowance. Um, so, members, the current projected outturn for the project is 1.055 million, um, which is 27k higher than the budgeted amount. Sorry, Mayor, I'm just getting a bit of interference here. Just bear with me. So, members, um, we've gone over the contingency budget at this stage by 27K, and you'll be aware, obviously, the substantial risks around the projects, and it's deemed critical that an additional budget of 250K is set aside. Um, members, that has been fully set aside in the quarter three outturn report. So the recommendation um, before you today is to approve the extension of the contingency sum and the revised overall project budget of 1.278 million. Thank you. Thank you, Alfie. Um, Councillor O'Neill. 
Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, I would like to uh, propose a recommendation. Um, you know that we um, uh, put forward the extra money to ensure the completion of this project. I think this council has put um, has put a lot of uh, resource into uh, the refurbishment and the reopening of William Street Baths because we're committed to this essential uh, community space. Like uh, one of the responsibilities of council is leisure, uh, and it's important that we actually invest in this responsibility. Um, you know, we've seen how the closure of this bath has been uh, just met with real uh, public unrest, uh, and there's a real uh, passion for the reopening of the of the baths, as well as a real need. Um, you know, we've got a I recently got an email from the Solidarious Women Club and showing the impacts of less uh, women accessibility uh, uh, for local residents and the impact that's having on uh, the outcomes of you know uh, people competing in swimming uh, competitions. So you know people before profit are completely committed to the refurbishment and the and the reopening of uh, William Street Baths. It's a it's a treasure. In our community, it's it's old, yes, uh, but it survived a lot, uh, and it's quite unique in in the learning pool uh, aspect that it has, uh, and it's got a lot of love by the local community. Uh, and it, when it's reopened, it'll have a lot of usage, and I think generate a lot of income for for the council. So we'd like to uh, support the recommendation and propose it. Thank you. Thank you, and I'm Councillor Kinley. Carmega Chair, and just on behalf of Champagne, we would like to second the recommendations within the report, um, like. Maeve there, you know, we, we've been committed to the, the refurbishment of this project since it's the, the work's been identified. Um, we think it's needed. The demand's there from the community. And as Maeve had referred to, we, uh, we did all receive a letter from the City of Area Swimming Club this week. Um, and they're hopeful that if this work's completed, they'll have access to it come September, which will allow them to fulfil their timetables. Um, so that shows the demand that we need for um, swimming within the city. And across the district. So I think it's really, really important that this work hasn't halted at any point. Um, so if there is anything that comes up, the, the finances that are within the report will allow for that any works to be um, completed. So just on behalf of Sinn Féin, we're happy to second the recommendation. Thank you. Um, Alderman Hussey. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Councillor McGinley may think I'm going to talk against it here, but, but I'm not because I was very interested in terminology used by Councillor McGinley. She talked about swimming across the city and the district. Uh, and if I look at 2.2, uh, evolving plan to address long-term leisure and sporting needs of the city is the, all that is said there. Now, I, I don't know about other representatives beyond the city, but I've certainly been having representation from people in my area uh, who would use Straban Pool or Oma. And, and, and in some cases, in a skill. And there is a dearth of uh, provision throughout that entire area. So whilst this is a short-term uh, fix, I've described it before as a sticking plaster uh, with regard to the city baths, uh, I am keen to know what the long-term leisure and sporting needs of the city and district with regard to swimming. What is the plan going forward? Uh, as I say, there are, there are folk in my own area crying out to be able to take their children to learn to swim. And the, the facilities are not available or not of a capacity uh, to take on the desire in the community. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Alderman Hudson. and I'm sure a report can be brought on that at some point. Um, Councillor Ferguson. Thank you, Mayor. And Mayor, this is a, a well-rehearsed conversation that we've had many, many times in health and communities and around the, the viability of spending some money on the city bus. And I think, Mayor, we have shown more than enough times that there is the need for this extra space. We need city bus so that we can actually have more swim provision within our other leisure centres. And that's revenue coming in. But it's also in a, a highly deprived area. And when we look at um, our green spaces and the, the mental health return for every pound that we put on their green spaces we get 14 pound back in mental health positive impact so our leisure centers are no different this leisure center is sat with absolutely no investment for far too long and it needs this investment and um, option 4.8 there sorry point 4.8 there it says that this um 
extra money is actually covered by the savings because of the closure of the, the city bus itself. So for us, it, it makes sense. We're, we're at this point, we want city bus back up and running so that people within the city can use it, schools can use it, and, and people have access to it. And also so that we can expand our, our SWAN programmes and our other leisure centres. So we're happy to support the, the proposal. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Ferguson. Um, Councillor Tierney. Thank you, Mayor. Um, we're also happy to support the proposal as well. Um, it's no secret that I want the city bus done slightly different and the entire um, building uh, redeveloped as opposed to, to what we are doing. But I also understand that we're um, in a very difficult financial situation. And the most important thing for us, and I think for, for, for that community and for the wider city and district, is getting all of our facilities um, to a standard where they can actually open and operate. Um, so it's important that this report um, is supported um, and gone through. And anyone, you know, I, I, I sometimes listen to the Alderman Hussey and, and think we're, we're almost getting very closely into the, the danger of putting one particular side of the council area against another. And I think we, we, we need to be careful um, whenever we're doing that. The reality is that City Baths has um, not been invested in for, for quite a long time. I've said it before, I love beside it for uh, years, and, and, and I've seen uh, what has gone on there, and it's been very, very little. The real we need this particular facility back open, and anyone who thinks that we don't should have a look at the email that we received, I think it was this morning, from uh, the Secretary of City of the Irish Women Club. Um, just them alone um, could probably fill the space within City Paths and, and the booking schedule within it. So it is a priority and we need to get it back open. So we're happy to support um, the, the recommendation that's in front of us. Sorry, the proposal from Councillor O'Neill. Thank you. Councillor Donnelly. Can I go, Chair? Just happy to support the recommendation by Councillor O'Neill. Thank you. Okay, no further speakers. Nada is proposed. Oh, sorry, Councillor Hergan. Yeah. It's just a question, really. It says that the, the goal is to reopen the city baths on uh, early autumn. Can we get a bit more? Can that be any more precise? Because it would be fantastic if we were reopening the city baths for children going back to school. Um, it, 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 so, what, what do we mean when we say early autumn? Are we talking about the beginning of September? Um, and members, just at this stage, because of the complexity of the works, um, we've been reluctant to put a specific date. Um, and very obviously, um, if we said the 30th of September, there'd be people who want to then the next day. Um, so we do anticipate it will be probably start of September, but we would like to get a little bit more surety just as the contract um, progresses. Um, and at that point, we'll publish a date, but hopefully we'll be in a position to do that fairly shortly. OK, thank you. Uh, so that... Paper passes. Um, uh, Mayor, if the proposal is to accept the recommendation, uh, I wish to propose an amendment uh, that we accept the recommendation. Further, officers will investigate how access to swimming can be improved throughout the district area. Yes, seconder. Intent the second mayor Alderman Kerrigan. I have um, Councillor Barr and and the uh, women Barr to be precise. Um, second in that. I don't see anybody with an issue with it, so um, no, it's fine. Councillor. Yeah, I, I actually said earlier that a report would be brought, so it just confirms that. So if we're all content, we will move on. And we will now, with everyone's indulgence, because it is approaching five to six, and we normally stop at six. Um, but with the indulgence, I'm going to try and do confidential so that when we return tomorrow, we're going straight into motions. So if people are content, we will. Propose we go to confidential. Straight into confidential. Okay, thank you.